everybody. Welcome to the 54th episode of Directly to You, our Nintendo podcast, wherein we talk about Nintendo and podcasts. Um, I'm joined by Parker. Hello, Parker. We talk about podcasts, guys. <laughs> we <laughs> talk one about of our this main one. topics. We talk we about did, this true. podcast consistently. Uh, yep. And to support this podcast, you can become a channel member on youtube.com slash fanatics4 for four ninety nine. What do you get for that four ninety nine? you may ask? I hear you asking your mind, Parker. What do I get for around four ninety nine? Well, you get mm-hmm. exclusive emotes, you get loyalty badges, you get gaming time with us, you get free switch keys from time to time. I just played Smash Brothers with Parker. Uh, not you, Parker. I never played games with Parker. <laughs> Parker's the worst. I played it with Falcon. We played mm-hmm. it for a, a long time. <laughs> it's a great grand old time, and you can too. Uh, also, you can become a supporter on the listener and support program through Anchor. It's great. It's a good time. You have more flexibility in how much money you want to give, but you don't get as much perks just by nature of the fact that it's not on YouTube. So I can't give you the emotes and the, the, there's just no, I don't have the technology for that. I'm sorry about it. Um, also, we have we have some plans for additional content on that, but we'll get into that later i don't even think parker 100 percent knows what i'm talking about when i say that apparently i don't because when you said it i was like oh it's like, a for <laughs> like what <laughs> it's so secretive that even parker doesn't know about it i'll tell you off of the off podcast um, cool. but yeah additional content working on on that but that's that's the spiel uh the the thing i would tell grimhane to tell me if i forgot something but he's just going to tell me about twitch and twitch has me in tax <laughs> uh limbo still so way to go twitch one, one of these days plus sh- I, streams are going to be weird i we, i gotta figure out streams because it's a whole thing you don't want to hear about it you know you guys <laughs> don't want to know but it's a whole thing probably just going to move the streams to twitch in the future but i kind of want to wait until they have that whole text thing figured out because i'm just mm-hmm. like doing a whole bunch of stuff for nothing when they're not really like rewarding it at all um so streams are probably on hiatus we'll talk about it i'll let you know um mm-hmm. and if if slash when they do come back it's probably going to be on a different day which would probably be either friday or saturday it's just weird because like every day of the week it bumps up against something you know mm-hmm. so thursday it will bump up against logan's video wednesday it bumped up against your video if we do a friday it bumps up against recording this saturday mm-hmm. it re- bumps up against this being uploaded you know so it's <laughs> yeah. like it, it, and sunday i stream with bob so it's, like, it's just like this whole thing that's like you gotta figure out logistically like when it makes the most sense to do it especially if uh i end up streaming onto youtube which again i don't know if that makes the most sense algorithmically mm-hmm. um yeah so that's that we can get into the the rigmarole of what we're playing. You playing any games, Parker? I surely am. Yeah. Also, side note, you were talking about Twitch. Was the first thing that you ever heard of from Twitch was Twitch plays Pokemon? No. Okay. That would definitely was for me. And because of that, I was severely confused of what Twitch was as a platform for a pretty long time. Like... I, I don't know. I just didn't really know about it. And then I was like, Twitch plays Pokemon. It's a bunch of people playing games together. So I just thought that's literally all Twitch was, was people like, you know, doing the Twitch plays Pokemon thing, but with other games. <laughs> that's not what it is. It's, I mean, it's a little bit, but not really. In any case. Um, yeah. Hey, I've been playing uh, Ease 8, Lacrimosa of Donna. I had been playing that like right when I f- first joined with the podcast and stuff and put it down, was playing a bunch of other games um and then came back to it and i'm liking it a lot more it's not that i disliked it before but i think i the pacing is a bit odd or something i don't know it's it's a pacing that i've had to figure out for myself how i preferred it or liked it or whatever and to to explain that a little bit better at the end of like every day in the game so like during the game it'll be like all right we should find this you know or you get to a certain checkpoint kind of a spot or whatever and there's a cut scene and they're like you know what we should probably it's getting late we should you know go to bed or whatever you know camp somewhere and then you camp somewhere and then you get a little piece of like lore of a, a backstory that i think will eventually it sounds like tie into the game but so far is completely unrelated and I was like treating my play sessions as ending 
right as those <laughs> times were coming up like they were like oh we should probably go to bed and i was like you know what i probably should too <laughs> and then we would get to a campsite and then it would start to have this cut scene of a weird lore dream thing and i was like i don't care but i can i just save <laughs> like so long story short if anybody wants to play ease eight just put that in the middle of your play session so that you can like leave and come back when you're actually you know like out and about and doing stuff and having a having a fun time because even coming back to that's annoying too where you're like oh, i've got to sit through this cutscene of stuff that i don't really care about yet but is world building for later or whatever but the the minute to minute gameplay is really really fun i enjoyed it a lot yeah the game was ruined for me because i played it too early I played it way too early <laughs> What do you mean by too early? Like they they sent it to me like two months before it came out, and it wasn't oh, finished. Wow. <laughs> it's like, oh goodness! It's like, it was like text, uh, like bugs and a whole bunch of like weird stuff in that game. Mm. <laughs> Gross. Yeah, that's I. I played um, Xenoblade Chronicles two pretty early, like not right that at the beginning. It was finished. <laughs> <laughs> and that one, like they, I mean, it was finished, and it was. Yeah. It, I really enjoyed it, but they like really patched in a lot of quality of life changes over time i came in after they had patched in their first like main patch which had like some map fixes where like you uh it's it's really hard to figure out where you are because it's these weird 3d map kind of things because you're on like titan things or whatever um and so at the beginning if you went to the map it would just go to like the way top level map and you're like i don't know where to zoom into like it, i'm somewhere i guess but i don't know where whereas then later in they patched it so that when you press the map it first went to where you are which is really helpful but um yeah there are a bunch of other quality of life things they apparently fixed later which would have been nice <laughs> to have yeah, those when i played but yeah you know whatever it is what it is cool. i had a good time anyway so yeah um, that's what i've been playing and so many s games um played uh, Super Mario Bros. 2 for the first time starting Did you know started Super Mario <laughs> 2? No, I sure didn't. Sure <laughs> didn't know the Super Mario 2. Um, but yeah, it's fun. It's I enjoyed it. I think I, I mentioned that I was playing it last week, but I've been playing it some more, and I'm enjoying it. Um, That's about it. I'm playing mm -hmm. uh, Captain Toad. Yeah! So Nintendo sent me the code to play Captain Toad the dlc mm -hmm. didn't touch it yet because it turns out i didn't fi i mean you can you mm. can play the dlc right off the bat if you never beat any other thing it just automatically unlocks but i was like nah i gotta finish the toad at levels so i've been mm -hmm. doing that i've been trying to get through those levels i'm like i'd say like 65 percent of the way through um mm -hmm. On the day that that happened, which I think was yesterday, I think it came out yesterday. They sent it to me yesterday, <laughs> so I played mm -hmm. a little bit of it on Thursday for people that aren't behind <laughs> the fourth wall. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I I played a little bit of it on Thursday, but that was interrupted by the other thing that I'm always playing and will be playing for the rest of all eternity: Smash Brothers. Mm -hmm. Um. Me and Logan played Smash Brothers and how the great have fallen let me tell you what <laughs> how so uh he was just losing most matches so it's like it was like to the point where because we started playing and you know like logan starts on his logan like hubris you know he's like oh yeah i'm just gonna win everything so i'm gonna pick isabel a character that i'm trying to get good at but i'm not good at i picked pokemon trainer destroyed him so then he was like oh, okay i'm gonna pick fox somebody that i'm good with destroyed him then he was like okay i'm gonna pick mario and at this point i was feeling bad so i switched off of pokemon trainer and i picked inkling who i'm not as like practice with at this point like overall mm -hmm. i'd say i'm better with inkling but i'm just not as sharp with them as i mean well with them yes as i am with pokemon <laughs> yeah. trainer um at this point so i lost that match but went back to pokemon trainer and won that immediately so it was like every match that i was pokemon <laughs> trainer pretty much i won and then other friends came in joelle and lance who've been on our streams in the past um they came in and i was running that rotation for a little bit and then we were going back and forth back and forth back and forth um Except for Logan. Logan wasn't doing as good as he usually does. I think, mm. the, and I, I think I've talked about this in the past, but the mechanics of Ultimate have definitely nerfed Logan 100%. Oh, yeah. So, in what, like, in what way in specifics? Just because, like, the air game is a lot different in Ultimate where you could just do whatever you wanted on smash 4 that's why a lot of people that are like that play smash 4 a lot i don't know if you watch like a lot of more competitive stuff from smash brothers but like 
Smash Four players don't or haven't really edge guarded as much as like the melee players do. Um, mm, yeah, and that's because edge guarding in Smash Four is pretty much non-existent because you can air dodge fifty thousand times and nothing happens to you. It's just fine. Um, so it's it's not even worth going for it. But in this game, it's like a a, a bullet in the chamber sort of situation. Like once you use it, it's gone. Right. Uh, so you you gotta be smart about when you air dodge. And if you air dodge and somebody sees it and you're still in the air, that's a free punish in the air. So you can edge guard a lot easier. That yep. is something that Logan relied on a lot is being able to edge. I mean, like avoid people edge guarding him in the last game and since like say i'm chasing him and he's mario that's who he mained i'm chasing him in the air he air dodges fifty thousand times and gets the one lucky one and then once that <laughs> misses he uses uh his forward air which is a spike and it's a spike that like pulls you so like if i'm like slightly above him and behind mm-hmm. him it will pull you down and you're dead oh wow <laughs> so yeah it was, like, it, like that was just like a easy kill confirm from uh, for him in that game just because of like how he used like just how he played the game where he's like he'll keep using something until it works um mm-hmm. and that was like the same thing with like smash attacks where like uh fox's up smash is pretty much like everybody else's tilts like how fast it is so he would just spam that a lot and mm-hmm. again now that it punishes you for doing stuff like that because it's it's not the same thing as like up oh, you used your one up smash you can't use another one it's just the more you use a move the slower i mean the slower it is but the the weaker it is overall so i was wondering about that so because that was a thing i'm pretty sure that was a thing in brawl too right yeah I mean, well i don't i don't know if it was a thing as much so it's always been a thing starting with melee i think Okay. with uh stale moves but it just hasn't been as prominent since mm. melee um, gotcha. but now it's i would say it's worse than it was in smash 4 and smash 4 was probably worse than it was in brawl because i tested it out in the training mode and i think the training mode maybe doesn't reflect that at all you um, can turn stale moves on and off oh in training okay mode. because i was trying to test that out i was like oh we, i guess they got rid of that because but that would be why <laughs> training mode is kind of stupid nice just because it's not accurate like the like the combo right. counter does it's not, <laughs> it's not yeah accurate. right so i mean because i think because it count do you mean in the sense that like it is too i don't know uh it it doesn't give you any grace really with what it counts as a combo no it's because like even what it does it, it just doesn't work <laughs> like it right, tries gotcha. to do the thing of like this is a true combo and this is like what you got that somebody could not have reacted to but uh-huh. it, it's just not accurate in that regard mm-hmm. yeah. um so it tries but it, it's, it's not great <laughs> uh, yeah but th- i mean i can go on and on about the stuff that's not great <laughs> in smash bros and i will be doing that on tuesday so mark your calendar uh <laughs> uh yeah, I'm at this point. I'm making it like I don't want to talk mm-hmm. about why, but I was playing the game and then I was messaging Bob about this one specific thing. And I was like, "All right, this is real dumb. Like, this is stupid." And he was like, "Yo, make a video <laughs> about that." And I was like, "Well, I might as well just do the thing that I was going to do anyway because I was already going to do that about some of the online stuff that's stupid." Mm, um, yeah. But at this point, it's just like, "All right, it's just pile it on." I'm just taking notes on like all the <laughs> dumb stuff that's like, "All right, fix this." Uh huh. Um, well, I will be curious to find out what those things are going to be. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <sighs> but yeah, that's about all I've been playing. I'm trying to think. I was also, I mean, you know, this week I was trying to figure out if it was possible to go to PAX or not. Because mm-hmm. um, you and Bob and Will are going to be going. But yeah, it's right. it the closer was getting to it and with elements of uncertainty, it looks like it's not going to be happening which is all right for this year and then i don't know hopefully next year yeah we, we can prepare for next year it would be yep. easier that way because there was a lot of like st- it was really last minute and like hey yeah, this could sure. be a thing that we could do and it's like oh cool <laughs> let's try for that and then like it, stuff just didn't fall into place fast enough right yeah i think it a lot of stars would have had to align to to work on that kind of a timeline <laughs> yeah 100 percent but yeah, so that's that's been about my week. Um, you want to get into some of this news? Sure. Cool. All right. So the first one we've got is um, it's an article from it, an interview with the Guardian and uh, Shinya Takahashi and Hisashi Nogami, um, and just 
had some interesting quotes in here so i figured we could talk on this a little bit read a little bit and and say what we think so i pulled it from nintendo everything but yeah here's the i'll read a bit there's three separate questions and then we'll kind of talk on each of these the first one was um it was on when switch became a success and introducing new hardware so takashi says before the switch came out it was very difficult to explain something unprecedented a game console that you can play in your house and also carry with you to play anywhere but after people started experiencing that they started talking among themselves that was when the switch was flipped so to speak (laughs) <laughs> good one oh, and yeah. then nogami on that same topic says it never gets any easier with anything new it's the unknown and people don't like trying unknown things they're always going to be a bit hesitant um so we're just not going to talk about the fact that takahashi leaked the 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 uh sequel to the switch it's going to be called <laughs> the nintendo flip <laughs> what they're going to call it uh yeah <laughs> so many puns will be ruined everybody all, using all their switch like the switch stop or the switch i don't know whatever things can't use them anymore i don't know i thought i thought it was just a little bit funny because like of all of the gimmicks that they that nintendo's had it this one seems like oh yeah yeah this no, one, I for sure <laughs> i mean i don't know i think that this and in hindsight the Wii are pretty like once you see it hold it use it it's like oh yes 100 percent i mm-hmm. understand this um there's uh, like there i think that they had similar apprehension where it's like nobody's gonna be caring you know nobody's gonna do that <laughs> and now we're yeah. all caring you know right uh so it's like just like with the Wii, it's like nobody's gonna be doing that in their living room everybody's playing Wii sports you know like that that sort mm-hmm. of situation um so so yeah in that in that regard sure but i think that he's like or they're trying too hard to like connect this to like um people just didn't understand we you right mm, like that's right. what it feels like to me that they're, yeah. they're kind of just being like we you made sense you just didn't get it and it's <laughs> like we you did make sense but it, it, it was it's the missing link between the switch like it's the the thing that right. happened before that that was like okay yeah that's how that came to be um because i think that being tethered to being at home and even even within your home you're still tethered to like within a certain distance from your thing mm-hmm. uh you can play it or whatever so it's not like anywhere with anyone it's like within reason you could play anywhere with people that want to play it and even they are kind of like like i I find that especially with younger people the gamepad presented this element of like well i don't really want to play unless i get to use that Mm, yeah Uh, that was it yeah exactly kind of the one special person got to use that and then everybody else had to be relegated to something else like a wii mode or whatever right yeah, and, and I feel unless like, it was like yeah. a more traditional game, where it's like, oh, I want to use the pro controller or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, it was like the gamepad was the thing. Like in Mario Chase, you know, like the Nintendo Land game, right. it's like, give me the gamepad. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of the equivalent of like playing a game with your class in elementary school or whatever, like heads up, seven up or whatever. Like you want to be the person at the front of the room getting to pick who's the, you know, or like right. duck, duck, goose. I don't know. You know, you want to be that one person. Whereas, so it's not equal playing ground or I You're mean, the even one in a lot of power. Right. Even in like a lot of uh, first party multiplayer Nintendo ga- or not single player Nintendo games that implement multiplayer like Mario Odyssey or uh, I don't know. Um, there's something else that was like that. Um, or like Captain Toad, how it was before, you know, before the actual patch now or update or whatever, where, yeah, you can play multiplayer in Mario Odyssey, but it's really just one person being Mario and the other person being Cappy, which isn't the same. Like, that doesn't really count. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's pretty much how the Wii U felt or whatever, too. And like, I I think, I mean, you talking about the Wii U, some, some element of it as far as like how it implemented the beginning stages of what the switch is sort of feels like the like what a tech demo is compared to a game like not to say that the wii u on a in an actual technical stance was that but just like it 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 brought up an idea that's like hey here's an idea right but then didn't run with it like kind of just took that and it fell flat on its face a little bit um, but again, not to say that it was a bad console. It, well, it's a console I never owned, uh, but it's it just didn't sell itself well on the things that 
all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, it just it had it had ideas, but it didn't really do anything with them. Like, right. I feel like there was so many games, like Watch Dogs, right? Like, they could have, if, if they really worked with Ubisoft, they could have sold that game on Wii U. Like, that would have mm. been the version. Because it is just so, like... It, it would have been so easy to make everything diegetic within that, you know, where it's like, I'm hacking this thing, but instead of pressing the A button, I'm actually hacking it on the touchscreen that I have, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but they, they just didn't do enough of that. And I feel like the only games that really did it either came too early or too late. So like Zombie U was a game that uh, did a pretty good job at like selling the gamepad, um, mm-hmm. like Nintendo Land, obviously. Um and then later on, like Splatoon and Mario Maker, but those yeah. games just took too long and or were too early <laughs> for, for it to like really matter. Also, Nintendo Land is like one of those games that's supposed to be like, hey guys, this is like, here's little seeds, plant them and make them into bigger, better things. And nobody mm-hmm. really caught on to any of that. Right. Yeah, no, for sure. It, that is interesting thinking about that, that it was like too early and too late. Just because like with the Switch, there's a lot of things that it's just it, all of the quote unquote gimmicks that have to do with the Switch, like, I don't know, motion controls or HD rumble or whatever are things that games have been doing for a while and just continually slowly improve upon. Like there's a better and better HD rumble, like Smash Bros just has really good implementation of HD rumble or you know, Mario Odyssey did a great job and stuff, but it's just like other games keep taking those things. Partly, I think, because they they were easy to implement. Like motion controls isn't... I'm sure it's not super easy to implement as far as, you know, on a technical level, but it's an easy concept at least. Right. As opposed to trying to implement a concept of like, all right, we've got a whole second screen to work with. What do we do with this thing? Right. Because uh, then, I mean, you have to be... Everybody has to be creative in that direction, which maybe they wouldn't be in the first place. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially know. when was... thinking about ports, because like a lot of like that that's mm, the yeah. a big problem with like will this come to Switch is just like do developers care enough to like get creative with solutions to like make the game run and run well and look good on the Switch without just doing the like you know like a adaptation job that they're used to doing where it's like oh okay this doesn't run as well as it would on like the xbox one version doesn't run as well as it does on playstation 4 but they're close enough that all we have to really do is lower the resolution and we're good you know yeah right um they would have to do more than that to make games competent on switch and work for what the switch is on a like power level but a lot of developers either don't see the like the worth in that in terms of money, which those people are crazy, um, <laughs> and some of them just aren't creatively equipped for yeah. that. Yeah, it is interesting, and I, I just think I mean going back to the the quotes that they had too. It's just funny, like. I don't know. I, in no way. I, I remember being, I don't know what, like 14 or whatever. And I was playing my GameCube and we were going on a road trip or something. And I was like, man, I wish I could just have a TV in the car and plug my GameCube into it and then just be able to, you know, play my GameCube, keep playing this game on the in the car. So it was just funny when they said to like, yeah, it was really, you know, it's like you can't really sell someone on it until they see it. It's like, nope, that's yeah. I, mean, I think the question for the question that anybody had was gamers were who knew about tech things were wondering what's going to be actually possible it more so yeah, than the, like the, the the people that have a, a cursory idea of mm-hmm. tech things like i know my pc right. yeah, can't exactly. do blank so that means that the you know mm-hmm. um they and they're still like that you know yeah and it's a reasonable question too i think that's you know but as far as like being able to sell the concept or whatever not f- literally sell but just like get across the concept pretty comes kind of seems straightforward yeah for sure yeah so and the next question that or the topic that they had which also kind of pertains to the wii which we were talking about a single um is on the prototype for the wii remote when it was shown to nintendo's wider dev team so takahashi says even among our developers there are often doubts when the wii remote was first introduced as a concept the reaction was what is that is it real will it actually work but once we'd all tried it we were surprised and delighted by it and that made us realize that it was going to work out with the nintendo switch we all knew the concept but when we picked up the prototype for the first time and saw Mario Kart running perfectly on the smaller screen, we were flabbergasted. Even though, even people who are well aware of the concept 
and design can't always tell if something's going to work. And then Nogami on the same topic says, it's not good enough to put your ideas into words. You have to give people a concrete example to show them how it works. It's on us to create things that allow players to experience that wow moment. Yeah, I mean, I I think just on a, a smaller level of like, like what we do you know like in mm-hmm. uh in like the videos and stuff like that uh it's hard to sell people on the idea of something mm-hmm. like they're so attached to what things are and like what they already know of that they're unaccepting of what things could be you know where it's like oh you're saying that this could be blank but that's nothing like anything i've ever seen so that's not possible mm-hmm and it's just that's not true like at, at <laughs> all points everything's impossible until somebody makes it happen right yeah i mean like a concrete example being an open world zelda game there's i think where a lot of people i mean a lot of people that thought it probably would have been a cool idea but i was just listening to a different podcast that they were talking about like yeah i before seeing breath of the wild and stuff i was like no that, i don't know if, if that'll actually work very well um, but then obviously it did and then like i don't know just thinking of you made a Either you or Logan made a Donkey Kong video talking about a 3D Donkey Kong game and how it could be cool and could work out. And a lot of comments were like, no way, man, because Donkey Donkey Kong 64 sucked. Right, it's exactly. Like, okay, that's not... I don't know if that's the marker to go by. <laughs> like, just because a pizza from one place sucks doesn't mean all pizzas suck, you know? <sighs> yeah. Truth. Mm-hmm. But, but, it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's like people are just simple in that way sometimes where it's like... <laughs> I can only imagine what I can hold, you know, Mm -hmm. it's kind of weird. Yep. Yeah. And I think, and reasonably so there's a certain amount of like, I can only imagine a certain amount of, even if somebody showed me, you know, the, the, um, Wii remote, I probably could have only imagined a certain, like, you know, five or six concepts of a game or something like that, that would use this, like a Zelda thing and, uh, you know, different games that would use that. And then Nintendo obviously went, and created a whole bunch of games that use it. So it's one of those things that as long as you keep showing people ideas, then they'll, I don't know, keep going with it. But um, but yeah, him talking about that wow moment was, I think, something poignant for Nintendo too, and something that maybe they strive for a bit too much sometimes, where it's like, if a wow moment is because of the gimmick of it, you know, like take VR, for example, where it's like, wow, I'm in this world. But then, like, I actually, it might not be something long lasting where you don't actually want to be in that world for a long time. Like, you'd rather do something that was amazing or was kind of awesome the whole time, but not like just phenomenally crazy when you first got into it. Is what I think about yeah. that. <laughs> um, and the last bit of the quotes this is uh, on just on Shigeru Miyamoto and in general. So Takashi says, he's not involved in the minute details of development, but does oversee entire projects and identifies major issues. Like, this is bad, this is bad, and this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was the funny part of it. I don't know. Uh, if he says something's good, it's rare, and you know it is. Although he's been uh, although he's been saying quite a few things are good, I should say. He's actually a shy person. Even when he thinks something is well done, he would not often say that to someone directly. And then Nagami says, I have never once been praised by Mr. Miyamoto. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then Takashi says, perhaps not to your face, but behind your back, he's very pleased with you. Well, considering he's still there. Yeah, I, right. I imagine. <laughs> That's man alive. That does not sound... I mean, obviously, it's it working. Does. Everything I've heard about Miyamoto <laughs> is that he's the Nintendo equivalent of Steve Jobs. Where right. he's just like mm-hmm. impossible to please, you know? He's like <laughs> super like critical. <laughs> yeah. It just doesn't sound pleasant, you know? I mean, but obviously it's also a cultural difference thing too, where there's I I don't know what Japanese culture is like, but obviously there's quite a big difference there in and of itself. So also I mean like sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? Like mm-hmm. the diamonds need pressure. <laughs> Yeah. So you you can't just be like, yeah, man, that's awesome all the time, you know, because not everything is always awesome. Sometimes you go yeah. like, nah, man, um, sorry to tell you, but this sucks. You know? Yep. We don't and, want. And, and it could be way worse if he let people run with those ideas that suck, you know? 
Right. Yeah, absolutely. No, and there's, I think what I'd be afraid of in that situation is, and I don't think this is the case, luckily, but um, just that more like stale ideas would would get to creep out because the like new and cool ones he'd you know be down on for one reason or another but i think that's at least not been the case typically and it's nice that he's stepping back because maybe he can't like, have the new and creative ideas i feel like in a lot of ways he's more accepting of that like a lot of times yeah. mm-hmm. he's almost too accepting of the new and weird ideas you know yeah right like Star Fox adventure where he's like <laughs> oh yeah you know that game that you're making about the dinosaurs put Star Fox in it that fox kind of looks like Star Fox make it a Star Fox game um mm-hmm. granted I'm I'm not as down on that game as a lot of people are I think that that's one of the better uh Star Fox games in terms of like concept and like how interesting it is on the whole it's not just mm-hmm. like this arcade experience right. um that I could pay a quarter for <laughs> elsewhere <laughs> um so aside from that i think that yes he is like he's like that but in the inverse way where he almost Mm -hmm. always wants you to be doing something strange right yeah and won't let you i mean sometimes it's good to not copy other people's ideas but like you know start with their ideas and go from there but maybe that would be looked down upon or whatever in the in the Nintendo context. Yeah, like how he never really wanted to make um, MMO, I think, is what he was talking about, which is funny. In the, Interesting. As far as what Logan made. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, how Miyamoto is like super down on like certain uh, genres just because of like how they work. Like he, he was, I think he said specifically he didn't want to work on an MMO because they take too long to make and you're never really done making them, you know? Mm. He w- he he said he doesn't want to like work on one thing that long, you know, one game specifically, rather than that's like one franchise, you know. Yeah, I mean that's interesting too, just because like he wouldn't. I mean, I guess. Do you remember how long ago it was that he might have said that? It was like two years ago. Tops, oh wow! Goodness gracious! Yeah, because yeah, I was gonna say like if it was a long time ago when he was very involved in more stuff. I mean, he's obviously still quite involved, but now it's more as a kind of director overseer type person a lot of times yeah um but i mean, I mean pretty even much that, everything within the company passes through him yeah so i, I mean it just he, seems he interesting because he could very easily you know even if he was very involved at the beginning once the kind of base package gets done he could easily step back and have other people take care of the expansion stuff or world expansions or any of that but hmm I mean, he's going to do what he's going to do, I guess. So, <laughs> or he could just hand it off to somebody else that does a different franchise that he's not involved with as much or something. Because, yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of Nintendo franchises that I... There's not a lot of MMOs that I care about, but or there's not any MMOs that I really care about. But that kind of game is definitely something that sucks me in. Specifically, I, I, I was going to mention this last week and I forgot. I found I was looking at games on the app store on my phone just to see if there was something I could just, you know, be playing to pass the time or whatever here and there and found that RuneScape, the classic RuneScape is on the app store and you can play it. And I downloaded it and then immediately was like, nope, not touching this (laughs) because I just know like even though it's the classic thing and like it kind of sucks using it on my little like iPhone SE screen. just that kind of world and progression is something that I definitely got sucked into for a long time at various points in my life and then like realized, no, I don't have time for this. I should stop and then stopped and then came back for a while later and was like, no, I can't. So on the topic of that and I mean, yeah. well, first I pulled up the the story. Uh, Mm -hmm. where he talked about that and he says a few years ago when MMORPGs uh, were coming into fashion I didn't want to make one Miyamoto as he was against the billing model uh, since I get tired of things easily I don't want to keep making one game he said instead Mm -hmm. Miyamoto wants to move on to the next project but with an MMORPG the development must continually add content and do regular maintenance and updates that development that development style apparently doesn't suit Miyamoto's personality and this is from Kotaku Mm -hmm. um but on the topic of the the, like the MMORPG thing the one that everybody wants at least within the Pokemon fandom is a Pokemon one (laughs) 
I oh, mean, yeah. the Nintendo Phantom 100%. is a Pokemon one. Um, and I was talking to uh, my friend Lance, who, again, you guys know from streams, when we were playing mm-hmm. Smash Brothers. And he's like a Pokemon fan. Like, he runs a Pokemon Facebook uh, page. Um, and he was like uh we were talking about the logan's idea of mmorpg and we we're like oh uh like what other game would make a lot of sense and we're like pokemon like pokemon's the obvious one and he's like what i never thought of that and i was like how, how does that even work i was like how are you a pokemon fan how is that even possible <laughs> yeah because i feel like there's I, a there's an off or it's like a kickstarter one i can't remember temtem yeah yeah um and i think that's that's an mmo situation i think yeah. like a small world mmo mm-hmm which I mean, still probably what it is. I, I I could be wrong, but I bet it's just you're all trainers or whatever. I think what you talked about in a separate video or whatever, and I remember commenting on or whatever it was. I feel like it would also be the best way to not because I even mentioned in that comment like that it would be economical to do all that all in one thing, which not financially by any means, but just in the sense of like, all right, you want this spinoff game and you want this spinoff game, and you want this spinoff game. Let's just May, like put it all into this one world where it can all mesh together well and you know you can be a doctor you can be a whatever like I would just be so good <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's talking about games that suck up your time uh, Smash Bros <laughs> got data mined and uh, so theoretically we should be seeing some returns of modes in 3.0 which are home run contest and stage builder and that's about all we know. What Yay, are your thoughts? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I think these were things that I, I definitely expected Home Run Contest to be in the base game. So I was yeah. surprised that it wasn't. And I was kind of expecting if it was going to be anything, it would probably be this. That it would just come at some point later. Because that seems like it's the ultimate game. You've got all the fighters. Like, in what world would you then not also just have all the modes? Because that's, you know, that's an important part of the game. I mean, important is subjective i guess but you know that's been a part of the franchise I mean, yeah, since if we're, if we're celebrating the history of this game this yeah. this franchise uh, i mean it make a lot of sense to have stuff like home run contests and mm-hmm. break the targets you know mm-hmm. like it's got it would be weird if like <laughs> stage builder comes back which was only in brawl i think it might have been in Sm- i don't think it was in smash wii u i I feel like I saw it here. Let me check. Uh, Is it? Because I never I, used it. I know I never used it in Smash Wii U. <laughs> let's see. It's possible that it... Okay, it looks like... Um, yeah, it looks like it was. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Which, but, I mean, I would have been surprised if it wasn't because of the touch... Or, you know, the touchpad functionality and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I remember. I remember. I barely ever touched that. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like it just seems like something that not as many people care about, right? Like if I if I said, what are the things besides Smash mode make you, that make you think about Smash Brothers? I don't know anybody that would be like, yeah, stage builder, man. That's that's a temple mode right there. Oh no, yeah, that's one of those where you spend like. I don't know, an hour on it at some point you make one stage and you play with some friends in it and you all just get up to 999% <laughs> damage yeah, because most, like, you exactly. all get stuck in there. Like most people make dumb stuff. Like you don't find yourself like with Mario Maker stuff. Like you know, like right. a lot of people try to make like legitimately like what would Nintendo make? Level levels you know? Right, absolutely. Um, nobody does that in Smash stage builder where it's like let's make a mo like a stage that is like really good Mm -hmm. uh it just doesn't happen they're always like troll levels or gimmicks of some sort i think part of the problem is probably just the fact and i I wonder if they'll kind of fix this now that they've learned from mario maker i don't know but i feel like just the content or each of the individual parts that are in it are just kind of bland to where you can't make something that feels thematic no matter what you do unless it's like oh look it's the shape of a something or other yeah <laughs> like, exactly you know it's like oh it's in a dinosaur Almost shape like all of the stages that i've seen have been like somebody's name or like something <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah yeah i mean and that said even you know even within smash itself it's not like a lot of the stages are you know like in a mario stage you can have a lot of theming to a, a stage because there's just so much variety that happens within you know 
a beginning to end platformer or whatever there's just a lot of space to work with whereas even in like the smash stages they're more thematic because of i don't know big blue or whatever you you just can't make a big blue kind of stage and the ones that are more static are pretty much boring if you really think about it like battlefield's really boring but it works like it's it's what it should be but as far as like an actual you know concept or whatever there's nothing interesting about it at all it's just something that works well for smash combat so i don't know maybe they implement some cool stuff in it that they again learned from mario maker and more different tools than just kind of the generic things yeah i I feel like this is just the mode for the people that have 70 me fighters (laughs) (laughs) like that that's the type of thing that they like doing but i i can't see it like being widely adopted uh, I think mm-hmm. the home run contest will have like a meta to it, and everybody's like, "Look, I got ninety thousand uh, meters <laughs> using Ganon without the bat." You know, like that type uh-huh. of crap. I think. I mean, yeah. Part of why home run contest is more fun is just because you can use the the actual skills of Smash in that. So you know, you're like, "I'm good at Smash. I can use all these moves that I know how to use." But then, yeah, compared to stage builder it's a completely different tool set so it's not like you can actually apply what you've learned until you've made a stage that kind of really sucks <laughs> and then try to use that in there so uh, is there anything else that you'd want to see i mean i'm guessing that's all the modes coming back for uh for this one but any other mode well i guess you're gonna be talking about it maybe some in your video but so i yeah, won't give away too much or anything so yeah it's uh it's cool to be playing games on the switch uh something you can do with your switch controllers poss- er, at some point is so google google chrome adds support to switch controllers so this is something that uh maybe folks know probably about project stream this we're actually in a second this will funnel into going to talk about some other google stuff just because it's interesting in the gaming context um yeah. but if you've got switch controllers which you do you can use them on Google Chrome for the streaming service whenever that happens, which I don't know, probably we'd find out about next week as well. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine it would be too far out because uh, the beta for that worked really well. Mm hmm. Like, I mean, again, it's always like a grain of salt thing on, on that level because I have freaking 900 up and down for my internet. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> right. I don't know what it is if you have like 20 up and down. I don't know if it works well in that regard. Um, but in my experience, it wasn't like any real noticeable lag. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that changes depending on like what game it is because that is like a single player, like RPG ish experience uh, yeah. with Assassin's Creed. So I don't know. Put Smash Brothers on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen for yeah. sure. <laughs> uh i'll i'll have some more questions about that in a second but we'll i'll go ahead and bring in the kind of bigger topic of this is that next week at gdc uh google is going to be announcing something they haven't specified what exactly but rumors seem to hint towards and teases hint towards they're releasing a game console of some sort gdc stands for google's doing a console (laughs) (laughs) Was that you? Did you come up with that just now? That was yes, good. of course I did. So proud that of sounds you. like I was being sarcastic, but I did. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, so I mean, so it's the nineteenth, which is at I think one p.m. Eastern time, which is a Tuesday, which is the day that I work from home, which means that I will be able to tune into it and find out what's going on. Um, and this isn't Nintendo, which we mostly talk about Nintendo stuff. But Google's I feel gonna like announce that they're buying Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great, and we're all going to hate it. Um, yeah. yeah. So, what what do you what do you expect to come out of this? I'm just curious in general because we probably uh, won't do like a direct or a predictions yeah, video or whatever. But yeah, so here's this. Um, I think that they're definitely going to announce. I don't think it's going to be like a console in the way that like I don't think this is going to be like a PlayStation or Xbox competitor or Switch competitor. I think it's going to be like a buffed up like Fire Stick TV or whatever. Um, whereas I don't think it's literally going to be like the USB thing that plugs into your TV, but it's going to uh-huh. be more akin to a set top box than it will be like this dedicated console that has like this uh, super noticeable controller that's like, this is the one that I identify with because the X button is on the top right, you know, like that type of crap. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I just think it's going to be really generic from that perspective, and it's going to have like the bigger third party stuff, like the Assassin's Creeds and stuff like that. They might have like a few studios make independent things for it. Um, but I, I just can't see it really catching on because for stuff like that to happen, you need IP. And right. they're, they're just not, the industry's not in the same place that it was when Sony or even Microsoft joined because a lot of stuff was in flux, you know, like uh, multi-platform games weren't as normal as they are now. Mm-hmm. So it was in, in the sense that like everybody gets the same game, you know, where it's like you'll get Home Alone on both the Sega Genesis <laughs> and also the N- Super Nintendo. But like they're different, you know, like mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Um, so I don't, I don't know if they'll be able to like really catch on unless they get some type like they if they're the ones buying take two and they're like <laughs> hey grant the photo exclusive on the google stream you know like mm-hmm. or whatever they decide to call it um then in that world then they're probably going to be a major competitor they got to get a big boy to make it they need their final fantasy 7 or they need even their halo you know right and i just don't know if they'll get that yeah i hmm. so i i actually would fall on the opposite side of this where i feel like hopefully if they're smart which i mean it's google like hopefully they'd be smart they've learned from other companies mistakes that like really it's kind of all in or nothing for gaming where you know like like you said the amazon fire thing or like even apple tv or like some of these other things will try to do gaming in some respect but it's like oh so we're doing a bit of gaming too and it just completely falls flat on its face because it's since it's not a main competitor then it's just really not anything at all um i mean then again i think they they can leverage the streaming stuff with the um like chrome and stuff so uh, theoretically yeah they could do that especially if it's something that they make it easy for third parties to get their games to stream on there but hopefully that's something that they would have learned from um for them hope uh, yeah just generally yeah, hopefully i just for them. don't know because google's so hit or miss with the stuff that they do because like right. a big part of like their business model is like hey we have all these companies that mm-hmm. like the, like these the in inner like branches and stuff like that that we just let run wild with ideas and we'll run with the ones that we run with until we turn them into google video and then it, we buy youtube and then google video dies you know they, mm-hmm. they're so willing to start and end things that is <laughs> hard to like know which one will stick yeah yeah that's a good point i think the thing is like you said they kind of try to put their fingers in a lot of pies or whatever and the thinking about the gaming market too besides sony and xbox um or sony and microsoft i can't think of and maybe you can of any actual like companies that came in and tried to compete at the top level like there were a lot that tried to compete they're like yeah there's all those big ones we're gonna do just a slightly lower tier thing you know like um i don't know the the ouya or whatever where it's like trying to appeal to a consumer market for consoles that's below the main you know the 400 hundred dollar console but i can't think yeah, I don't of know, any i don't know anybody that like it's always somebody that's like we're going to do what the other guys are doing or we're going to do it better like with apple and bandai when they did the mm-hmm. pippin you know like that was the most expensive one <laughs> yeah how i can't because i wasn't paying attention at that point how much was the i'm looking it up how much was the pippin when it launched i think it was like, it was like 400 dollars or something like that oh, okay oh huh. yeah so that's i mean that's a thing um yeah i don't know i i feel like if they don't come in at that top like as an obvious competitor to microsoft Whoa, and sony six hundred dollars <laughs> oh goodness that's so much i mean for a, but i mean i i feel like that's kind of the way you should go about it probably is i mean not six hundred dollars like that's I mean, that's too much for a first to be time fair this is a partly owned apple venture right. so 600 dollars is a bargain for most apple That's, products <laughs> yeah you're not wrong there um yeah so i guess the other thing for this is some of the rumors specifically coming from some youtube channels or whatever like uh, uh liam robertson and spawn wave were commenting on this but um that sega and ubisoft and id software 
are going to, or maybe Ubisoft and id Software were for somewhere else, were from somewhere else or a different publication or something, but that Sega would be making a exclusive game of some sort, but not not a Sonic or not a you know a couple of those specific IPs, but some other ones, uh, and that Ubisoft would be doing something and id Software would be there doing something, and so those could. I mean, the Ubisoft and id Software things could easily be multi-plat announcements that they just are like, yeah, it's also coming to Google and we're going to announce it at this Google thing. But as far as like exclusive IPs, I think you're right. They need to have something like that. Otherwise, like even right now, I had a coworker asking me and my friends like, hey, I uh, just got a bonus at work or whatever. Should I get a Switch, a PS4 or an Xbox? Or if I want to get a Switch and something else, should I get a PS4 or Xbox? And I was like, I think a Switch and a PS4 get the switch first for and then went through a bunch of reasons and i was like right now like it's not really worth getting an xbox besides for like game pass i guess um but even that is probably coming other stuff soon anyway so it's like without having a ton of exclusives you know what's the point of getting that console instead of others yeah yeah what and so the other question that i had on this is the project stream thing what do you envision for that? Um, so that, you know, the Google Chrome streaming stuff. Well, I don't know if this is along the lines of like what you're looking for, but I think that <laughs> it's going to be a like information hog. <laughs> I think it's going to be yet another thing that Google uses to figure out the inner psyche of everyone on the planet. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's absolutely going to be collecting all of our information. It's going to be like this player presses B way more than this player, you know, like that type of crap. You yeah. know, it's like going to be levels upon levels of to data, sell our data on, on the black market. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just going to like, it's going to be buying like competitive players data and selling it to other competitive players. <laughs> so that down into the future, they can download that and upload it in, straight into somebody's brain yeah. and everybody will be robots playing games all together. Clearly. It's the only yeah. way forward. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I don't know. It really just depends on pricing model. I think that like for Google again like if they go through this data collecting route it wouldn't shock me for them to be like it's two hundred dollars you know mm. like and it's like on par with everything else in in most regards to like how how stuff looks and all that other stuff but it's significantly cheaper and that's because their end game is not to monetize it as a product mm -hmm. but more so monetize you as the product interesting yeah which is gross, you know, like, uh -huh. but, you know, like it, it wouldn't shock me because that's it's one of those things that like cool. anything that has to do with data privacy and things like I, I can't reconcile in my brain how much I do and don't care because like I do care on a base level. But at the same time, it's like the negative there haven't been any negative effects to me directly yet. Right. So it's kind of like. I don't really know if I care, but then, you know, of course, all the conspiracy theory I, stuff of, like, the apocalypse is going to come because of it, blah, any of that. I'm half like, and half. Like, yeah. on on some level, I'm like, I'm fine with it, where it's like, oh, this is just going to give me more things that introduce me to things that I like, you know, yeah, where it's right. like, I'm on Amazon, and it's like, you may like that, and it's like, yes, I do also <laughs> like that. You know? How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but on the, at the same time, I don't want to, like, I don't want it to know literally everything about me, because, you know, like, security systems aren't perfect, and right. I've lost money because PlayStation N got, I mean, play, PlayStation N, PlayStation Network <laughs> got hacked, and that's not cool, so yeah. I don't want to, like, just stuff like that, like, if Google, if Google gets hacked we're done like everybody mm. it's over <laughs> absolutely um so it's like it's just like another added level to like if that happens then rip us uh that said will that stop me from trying this thing no <laughs> mm -hmm. hey, yep it might not stop you from trying that but some things might start you trying assassin's creed 3 oh that God. you may have not otherwise tried oh my God. um <laughs> For example, uh, so specifically, we got some. We know Assassin's Creed 3 is coming out on March 29th on all the other consoles, and then coming out May, uh, I forgot to look it up, May like 16th or something like that, I think, on Switch. Uh, which is a little bit lame that it's coming later on Switch than it is on the other consoles. Yeah, that's dumb. However, it is going to get some extra 
things, um, which mostly are like quality of life type stuff. So, for example, all the games are going to get some new. Yeah, I mean, obviously improved graphics this is a remaster, but also some additional gameplay stuff like there's a new added stealth mode and they changed some aspects of the in-game currency or economy or something like that. But then the Switch exclusive features are HD Rumble, which we all, yep, HD Rumble is great. Uh, motion control stuff for, you know, aiming, um, but also touch screen interface so that you can use that for, I guess, UI things mostly. And then it has a specific uh, UI design for docked or handheld to be a little bit different. So that's nice. Some quality of life things that make it a little bit better. There it is. There it is. Um, yeah. I had this game on Wii U. It's fine. Um, a lot of people don't like it. Where they're like, that was the decline of the series. That's when they started getting bad. Mm-hmm. And it's like, eh. I was, I had that like annoyance that I had with Xenoblade Chronicles X where it's like, I want to play as the thing on the box. And you know, <laughs> you like spend the first two hours of the game playing as his like dad or something. Uh, um, yeah. And that's not fun. But eh, outside of that, it was okay. <laughs> yep. I was talking to my coworker about uh, my friend Mitch, talking to him about some things along those lines today where I was like, Mitch, I don't really like, I, I realized I don't really like playing games at this, like we both got Octopath at the same time. Right. And the way he plays games is just like blitzes through them and just pretty much goes as fast as he can. Whereas I like to take my time and enjoy it and that kind of stuff. And, but we had an interesting conversation about it where he was like, yeah, the reason I do that, I guess is because it's like oh well i found out there's this really cool weapon at the end game and like well i want to use that weapon in the end game and then so he'll like go through to the end like you know go as quick as he can and stuff so that he can get to that weapon but then by that point there's not really anything to do anymore and you don't want to go back and like fight level three dudes when you've got a level 200 weapon or whatever i don't know um and i was like yeah that sounds like a horrible way to play games <laughs> like i didn't like that at all and i told him like yeah no i just like i mean to a detriment i kind of level everybody up you know in in playing pokemon or whatever i'll level a ton of my pokemon up all at the same time and try to keep things kind of even and sometimes in like dark souls or whatever i would unnecessarily level up people's such and such and instead of min maxing which i should have done or something like that but it's just, you know, I like to take my time with it. And he was like, yeah, I kind of wish I could play that way, but I just can't. I'm somewhere in the middle of that. Um, a lot of times, at this point, I like snack a lot with different games where it's like, I'll try this. Do I like it? No, I'm done. I'm not touching it. Never <laughs> playing it again. Um, but if I like a game, I'll do somewhere in between that, like binge uh, culture and then also like taking my time with it, like Pokemon, right? Like when mm-hmm. Pokemon the Sword and Shield comes out, I'm probably going to beat the Elite Four within the first three days. It's just yeah. going to happen. Um, but <laughs> during that time, my Pokemon will all be on the same level, you know, mm-hmm. like I'll probably have multiple teams, but yep. I'm still going to binge it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's how that is. <laughs> uh huh. Um, but another thing that I've talked with my friend Mitch about, which is an accurate segue, but kind of a random one, is Castle Crashers. He actually was the one that told me about it in the first place because I'd never played it back in the day. Um, but it got teased that it's coming to the Switch, which is about the end of that news story. Sure, but, why not? <laughs> but is, uh, in case you like Castle Crashers, it's probably going to come. I don't know. Probably they'll announce it at GDC, I guess. Or I mean, that's coming up. PAX is coming up, too. So any number of places to announce it or just you know out of the blue i guess maybe um, that's the thing because i don't even know if i'm allowed to say that i, I don't, don't know if i'm allowed to say it well um, then don't say it i guess so i won't <laughs> <laughs> just say it to me later because now i'm curious yeah i'll tell you later <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome everybody keep tuned to directly to you for more <laughs> hints at things that will tell you when it was that thing i guess i'll let All you right. know on twitter if i was allowed to say it Oh, cool. Sounds good. Um, so, yeah, Castle Crashers might be coming. Uh, the last news article is another game that may be coming. It's had some teases involved and in sorts is uh, Borderlands 2. Uh, well, so first of all, Gearbox teased that something Borderlands announcement-wise is happening at, at uh, PAX on the 28th. It's Dan's wedding. <laughs> Wait, what? Are you so you're not in on this? Um, no so idea. We told, <laughs> so the whole saga of trying to get Dan the packs. 
Dan's right. like, I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it to PAX because I'm getting married and suits are expensive. And me and Bob uh-huh. are like, I mean, this part's not really related, but me and Bob are like, you don't need a suit. Just wear some shorts and you're fine. <laughs> um, and uh, Alyssa's like, no. So then uh, when that got announced, I mean, well, before that got announced, I was like, yo, y'all can just get married at PAX. It's was like, me and Bob will play your wedding. It'll be great. It'll be sponsored by PAX. Like, what so type, good. Like, how good would that story be, you know, for PAX? For them to be like, come to our event. These people are getting married there, you know? Like, That'd be that's, great, honestly. great exposure. Sponsored by PAX. So then this happened, and I saw Alyssa was, like, all hyped, and she was like, she was like, oh, Borderlands. And I was like, we know the theme to your wedding now. And then uh, Bob replied, and he was like oh you make cards for them <laughs> or invitations so that's the, that's what it is it's their wedding there you go oh wow so sweet what a wonderful time for dan and Alyssa. <laughs> i didn't know they weren't and already Alyssa, married i don't know why Alyssa's i didn't catch down that. now she's down you know now that she All knows right. that that's the theme she's in <laughs> good job Alyssa. we're proud of you <laughs> did we ever did you guys ever get her on the podcast i can't remember i yeah, feel like she's yes. been on the podcast before okay. i thought so I remember for sure Jess had, and I was like, I think I know you guys at least talked with Dan about her getting her coming on at I some point. I think but. Alyssa was on before Jess. I'm pretty well, sure. Looky there. Well, um, fun times. So yeah, yeah. But yeah, so there's some sort of I don't know. We don't know if the tease is for Borderlands three or if it's just for Borderlands two coming to Switch. But it seems like if it's not both, then it's probably at least Borderlands two coming to Switch, just because they put out a screenshot that was specifically from Borderlands two. People are going to be so mad. Oh yeah, <laughs> if it's just Borderlands two, like people are so mad. And hey, granted, I don't care about Borderlands at all. Right. Uh, full transparency. Um. <laughs> so like, no offense to Dan and Alyssa's wedding but uh, the theme not Mm-mm. that into it not you up know? your alley um, border, I always describe Borderlands as like the worst destiny and I'm not even that into destiny mm. uh, so like meh yeah, I I would have to look into it some more because I don't know a ton about Borderlands and I'm just not into any shooters really at all of any sort um, so Same, except for Splatoon yeah uh, which I still need to try out Splatoon at some point. I yeah. know that's Splatoon's blasphemous dope. or whatever, but Splatoon's dope. Yep, that stuff. Uh, but that's it for the I news. I had to say hashtag free product for because I didn't get that for free. I paid for it. Look at you! What a real <laughs> Nintendo fan. <laughs> Paying for your games. Yep. And speaking of being a real Nintendo fan, AJ, you made a video this week on Kirby, who's yeah our friendly little Nintendo man. Uh, hashtag free product. <laughs> Um, yeah, so here, I'll give some, so you gave a lot of good points. Uh, here's some things that, that I thought, one of the things you talked about was, um, just like that pretty much now, a lot of times you can just fly st- through stages and just go to the top of the stage and go all the way across, which is accurate. Um, and as far as like making it more difficult and stuff like that, you know, not being able to do that because of, you know, similar or having the example of the way that you did it in Epic Yarn, which is that you couldn't fly and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, for the first time ever, played the uh, Kirby's Adventure on the NES Online stuff recently. Mm-hmm. And I, in that, you can fly as long as you want, but pretty much all of the, I mean, probably for technical limitations, if nothing else, I think it's just like there were a lot of vertical levels and there were a lot of ceilings and like, for a lot of reasons, it was just like, yeah, you can fly as much as you want, but it's not really going to help you. And right. so I feel like that's another thing, too, where, where like if if they want to leave in the flying mechanic, they could just, you know, put in reasons that it would actually yeah. not be that great to design do it. around it. <laughs> yeah, it's like and the thing about it is like that was footage that I specifically captured. Like I made it a point to mm-hmm. go into the game somewhere mid game to be like okay like this isn't like one of the early levels in the game and I'm mm-hmm. literally flying through it right. you know like I could literally beat this entire level by just floating around <laughs> everything um, which is not interesting yeah I mean and it's just like I think the at some point it seems like Kirby became a left to right yeah left to right I had to think of my lefts and rights uh, a left to right uh, 2D platformer or whatever but even in, you know, uh, at Kirby's Adventure, it just wasn't completely. Like, there were, it definitely was more left to right than up and down. But I feel like they could just add in a lot more of that stuff, too. And just, you know, 
have it be just kind of a different setup where it's not um because right now there there are a lot of in, in kirby star allies there's a lot of like doors where you know you go through one area and you get to a new area blah 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 that kind of thing which has been in the game a bunch it seems like as opposed to you know mario 2d games or 2d mario games which literally is like if you just scrolled all the way to the right you'd see the flagpole and then you'd be there right. but they don't really have to do that with kirby like they could just do something different i don't know yep so that's stuff uh, and the other thought that i had was uh pretty much so you talked about i don't remember what it was that you said that made me think of this but i kind of feel like and hopefully Nintendo is treating Kirby allies as their Smash Bros. Ultimate in the sense that not that it's like their best game ever, but that it's their like homage to everything else uh, because it's like got all the content and stuff like that, which maybe in the context of even when like talking about Smash Ultimate that like the next Smash game, either this one will be a platform game for a long, long time and then they'll just keep adding to it like in an overwatch kind of setup or whatever either something like that or the next smash game is just going to have to be not you know just something different enough um they can't just be like all right now we'll make another one with 12 new characters and take out even faster than that (laughs) yeah exactly like they're just gonna have to switch up the formula more than they have in the past out of necessity because they've done the like grand finale of this you know, kind of set up. So I feel it's like Kirby Star Ultimate. Allies, same kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so hopefully that's the case and that after Star Allies is done, which it is now, their next Kirby game would be more inventive for that reason, if nothing else. Yeah, and it sounds like Hal wants to do that. And the th- the, I just like, uh, people, man. <laughs> <laughs> it never fails. So somebody commented, and I didn't pull this comment, but they were they were basically being like, clearly you don't understand the point of Kirby. I'm like, what? what? Like, I'm like, dude. <laughs> Last and and like I don't oft pull this card, <laughs> but I was like I, I pretty much was like last time I checked I'm the one that got the press release that was like this is who this game is for, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. like nowhere in that press release does it say play this with your little cousin, you know, like play this with mm-hmm. a baby, you know, like it's yep. supposed to be a game that you play with everyone. It's a game for everyone, literally in the literal sense. Mm-hmm. Not that this is like a kid's game, you know, like it's approachable for kids, so only kids can play it. Like Smash Brothers, it's approachable for ki- for kids. If you're if just kids are playing a the game, they can play it. It's a great time, you know. Yeah. But there's also potential for people like me and Logan to play it at a higher level than that, you know. Mm-hmm. And then people like Zero and MK Leo to play it at an even higher level than that. And that's all I'm saying. Add some and then even higher to than that. Game. I can be playing it's it. It's Parker. It's Parker. He's, <laughs> he's playing even by better himself. Than, he's even better than MK Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I've, you know, I've actually never died in Smash. That's uh, that's the truth right, right there. Oh, snap. No, but yeah. <laughs> um, somebody asked, was it, I don't know where it was. It was like, somebody asked me if we ever played. I was like, no, I don't think, <laughs> we haven't played literally any game ever. No, you're right. Yeah. Cause you're, you're absolutely right you're scared it, i mean it's 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 honestly more fun to leave it like that for now I mean, at some point that'll happen but for yeah. right now it's like yeah it's just fun to i can lie about how good i am or yeah, not, just, i mean just, i haven't i've been very honest you, that yeah, i'm you, pretty you've mediocre been like the opposite where it's just it's like there's not even a point because right. like i i like considered the idea especially like the like two episodes where everybody was on I was like yeah we should just like play smash brothers after or before the podcast but like since you were like i'm just not good i just feel like that wouldn't be enjoyable for you and me either for me to be like either i'm like destroying you and like Mm -hmm. over and over again winning like in a lot of like community things where i'm like i'm like Mm -hmm. all right this is getting boring or in the other way where it's like i have to play like to a lower level of like i don't do certain things like okay i'll let you come back to the stage and i'll let you get that just that just sucks Yeah, yeah like i've i've done that before with you know playing games with my wife at certain in certain games or whatever where i'm just like yeah i'll just stand over here and let her do this thing just because she doesn't play games very much and that's right. you know i want to be inclusive because i don't really want to just be like all right let me do everything because that feels yeah. like a, a crappy move right. in and of itself so 
Yeah. It's, it's just uh, not a great time for anyone involved. Because, <laughs> like, either you're being condescended to. Right. Or you're, you're like, lessening your potential. And it's just, mm-hmm. like, it's just not a great time. So, it's, like, yep. it, on, on that level, it's, like, all right, we got to find a different game. Maybe, well, definitely, most likely, when Pokemon Sword and Shield comes out, that'll be when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> I think like Mario Maker and stuff like that. mm -hmm. And it's not that I'm not bad at Smash Ultimate. I'm just I'm good for a casual, bad for a competitive player for sure. But I'm just you know that's about where that's at. (laughs) I feel like I'm on the high end of. uh, Well, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm bad for a competitive player, but I'm not like I'm not zero. You know, right? Yeah. So I'm like. I'd say like a tier and a half below that, you know, where it's uh-huh. like like zero now, not zero in Smash Four. Like Smash Four Zero is like two, three tiers higher than me. Mm-hmm. But Smash, like zero now, where he's like not in the tournament scene as much. You know, he gets in tournaments sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, like that's kind of where I'm at. Yep. Um, but one of these days, who knows? Maybe I'll start doing the tournament grind. <laughs> I'll just go to every tournament ever, and I'll be fighting MK Leo. The calling it now. <laughs> oh yeah good stuff um yeah but in the the comment or the kirby context of things that was really good words that i used right there <laughs> um you guys said words about about kirby videos that aj made with his self yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm trying really hard. <laughs> I'm actually not anymore. That's the point. All right. Kev Clips Gaming says, look, I'll defend Kirby Star Allies with my life, but you make a great point, which is an interesting sentence. I'll say that. Um, it's a great game to play with friends. It has a massive list of incredible music. The fan service is through the roof. Each dream friend is so unique and fun to play. Modes like guest star and heroes in another dimension give the same uh, gives the game quite a lot of replay value the ultimate choice is refreshingly difficult the bosses are fun the final boss is absolutely outstanding the boss before that was super memorable the mini games are fun the game looks great and it's full of little secrets that make the game worthwhile i have plenty of problems with the game and it's definitely not up there with odyssey or breath of the wild but it's still a pretty fun time um i mean in in a lot of ways i'd agree with that you know where it's like it's it's novel I, I mm-hmm. wouldn't necessarily describe it as like a great game. It's novel. It's mm-hmm. like if you if you're like deep in it and you know like oh look at that version of Meta Knight that's cool you know like if you're you're on that level of the of the fandom and like that's what you're in it for. Mm-hmm. It is not necessarily like challenging gameplay, but just the fan service size of it. It does a good job at stuff like that. Um, I think that the fact that it has like a harder mode in the like boss rush sense is okay but it's not (laughs) as good as like a full on like this is a harder version of the platforming because it kind of just feels like you know like oops all berries the mode you know Mm -hmm. And, and not even really th- that you know well maybe even that you know where it's like <laughs> this isn't even the best part of this and you're just giving me just this you know mm-hmm. um so it's like in that level like it's like yeah we provided something for more uh like better players or whatever but like not what we would want you know i think it also yeah because the challenging boss rush seems to assume that the only challenge people are looking for is like a tricky combat time yeah, when really exactly. it's like no i like i want to play the game and feel like i'm i'm overcoming something to get to the end of it not just these boss fights like the boss fights cap off a, a good level in a you know in the right scenario or something like that but I don't know if I, I mean like the boss, I feel like the boss fights in the regular game are also very easy like you can choose right. them really easily but exactly. it's just like I don't even think about Kirby having boss fights mm-hmm. you know like it's not right. one of those things of like, like Splatoon is like one of the series that's like that probably has some of the best boss fights in any Nintendo game ever mm-hmm. specifically the first one has really good boss fights mm-hmm. like the last boss fight in the first game top 10 top 5 Nintendo boss fight of all time. Easily. Wow. Easily. It's real dope. Um, but Kirby's not one of those games where it's yeah. like, I think of like, man, that one boss fight is awesome, <laughs> you know? No, it's, I mean, and even as far as the multiplayer stuff goes, so I, I didn't, I don't own Kirby Star Allies, but I played good. <laughs> a good, a significant chunk of it with um, two friends of mine because 
I, I say a significant chunk because in the fairly short amount of time that we played it, we were able to get through a significant chunk of the game without dying once yeah. or without any difficulty compared yeah. to at the time. So this was um, at some point, I don't know, at the end of 2017, uh, a game called Nine Parchments came out. Yeah. Um, and we played that a lot. Like it was just the three of us specifically would just play it together. And it was just really fun because and we would die a lot and we'd have to come back and start things over. But it was like it was just a fun time because together you're overcoming this thing. Whereas we were like falling asleep playing Kirby Star Allies. Because yeah. again, the nostalgia and the that kind of stuff is fun. But the actual minute to minute gameplay is just like. All right, we got to the end of this level. All right, we it's got to the end of this mind level. Mind-numbingly boring. <laughs> like it, it's it's like the gameplay is there as a means to an end, and it's it, like right. it's not the end. Right. Like, the reason why people are playing this game is because of like, oh, look at that cute ally that I have now. You know. Mm -hmm. But, but it's still not to say that that's not a thing that can't be the case in further Kirby games. It's just that that shouldn't be the end all be all. You know that you. I, I mean, it was Sakurai, I feel like, who kind of started that whole easy to learn, hard to master type of a thing. And with the early Kirby games, that was what he specifically set out to do. And it's just not something one end of that spectrum has just been forgotten about along the way, because a lot of people like most people who play games, play it casually and play through one time and then they're done. So a lot of people probably haven't gotten to experience the harder version of it. And so then it's just you know there there it is they did the easy version and then they finished it and they're like well that's all that game is it's just an easy version when really there's more depth that used to be there i guess but isn't anymore not to say it's ever been the dark souls of kirby or anything <laughs> yeah <laughs> but speaking of the dark souls this is a dark souls of comments i haven't read it so i can't say that for <laughs> sure but here we go uh spectrum bots 42 said i'm gonna get a lot of heat saying this but kirby's adventure nightmare in dreamland is meh Superstar Ultra is underwhelming. Kirby 64, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, uh, Dreamland 2, Return to Dreamland, Planet Robobot, and Kirby Air Ride are the only Kirby games I like. Well, that's a lot of Kirby games to mention. I, it is. Moving along. It is. I the, mean, it, it, it is a hot take saying that Kirby's Adventure is meh. That's a uh, hot take. You mean that Nightmare in Dreamland? Because I think he said, um, he said he said he but, likes Kirby's Adventure. But he Kirby, said, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to get a lot of heat for this. But Kirby's Adventure, uh, Nightmare in Dreamland is man. Okay, I get. Yeah. Okay, okay. I thought he was saying that. Okay, get, so, gotcha. Yeah. I'll gotcha. reread it actually for people. So he was saying hot take or whatever. But Kirby's Adventure, Superstar, Kirby 64, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, Dreamland 2, Return to Dreamland, Pro Planet Robobot, and Kirby Air Ride are the only Kirby games he likes. But he doesn't like nightmare in dreamland and ultra is underwhelming okay um, gotcha so like i thought he was like like partitioning the ones that he doesn't like first mm -hmm. and then being like the rest of these are okay though like starting with kirby 64 is where he's like these gotcha. are pretty good though <laughs> um but no that's a pretty long list of of games that i like so i mean yeah but i mean i guess there's you know if somebody's like a huge fan of epic yarn for example then yeah they're th probably mad that that spectrum bot said that but um moving along with the rest of your comment spectrum bots the lore behind kirby is great though i'd like to see a 3d kirby or a sequel to air ride with joy con controls and and more playable characters additionally an eight player online city trial that'll include cool stuff like paint jobs for machines a garage to swap out different rides as well as seasonal events that could occur via switch's system clock would be sweet that'd be dope yep i'd be I down think, yo i want another kirby air ride that's the thing. I think um, some franchises that Nintendo has do a good job of making you want the older versions of that kind of game. Like when New Super Mario Bros. first Which, came out. I don't out. know if that's a, like something that you could describe as doing a good job at doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where it's like their new stuff really makes you yearn for their old stuff. You know? I guess, well, yeah, no, for sure. So I mean, in the context of like, so uh, Mario, Super Mario World was a 2D game. And then the next one was 14 years later with new Super right. Mario Bros. Oh, and yeah. so they evolved and made some great games that went branched off in different directions to the point where they're like, oh, you know what we haven't done in a while is a 2D Mario game. And right. then when that came out, like people were excited about it. But then I think some of these, some franchises, I mean, even the 2D Mario stuff as of late 
has like really harps on the same thing over and over to where it needs some more space to want the older stuff again in the first place. And so that's stuff where I feel like Kirby would benefit from, I mean, obviously, yeah, we'd like a, um, another air ride game or something along those lines and because it's been a while but if they did a billion air ride games then we probably wouldn't want a ton more of those anymore so i think if if all of their games are too similar which arguably a lot of the kirby games probably are then it just gets tired pretty quickly so i think you need to branch off a little bit more is definitely one of those games that they're they have been the least like apprehensive of making weird stuff you know Mm. where it's like let's do canvas curse you know like it's stuff like Mm -hmm. that kirby's air ride and all all that crap like they do a lot of quote-unquote spinoffs you know right like i don't i don't feel like any kirby game is necessarily like categorized as a spin-off in their mind because kirby's just the, one of those series that they just throw ideas at the wall and see what sticks mm-hmm. yeah that's inter- maybe it's just that it doesn't i'm trying to think yeah i don't know how to categorize that then in my mind like maybe it's that it's not spin-offy enough you know or something like that or it's it's not taking it in a because it's all 2d stuff or something but well uh, Kirby Air Ride isn't obviously but yeah I don't know that's interesting I think it just it needs to feel like there's something fresh happening there and the gimmicky ones I, maybe that's the, what it the is thing the thing that's t- like weird is like and I think I talked about this in one of the other Kirby, video, Kirby videos that I did they could just consolidate a lot of the stuff that's there into the core experience of the game mm-hmm. like the mini games and make that a part of the actual game Mm, and yeah. it would feel a lot bigger, you know? Yeah. But since they, like, partition everything off and they're like, here's this short experience, here's this short experience, here's this vapid mini game, you know? <laughs> do you uh, think they just don't want people to have to do bits of the game that they don't like? No. <laughs> I, I think that they expect you to play all of it anyway. Mm-hmm. I just don't think that they uh, approach Kirby with as much uh, level design thought you know where they're mm. just like what can we include here that's cute neat and fun you know yeah uh and let's just throw all that stuff in there and not really try to figure out how they can like mesh together yeah yeah that's interesting uh something else interesting christy robinson says i really love kirby i'm a huge fan i love the fan service of star allies and all the different modes making it challenging at the time, I wish the story mode was harder or give us an option. For me, ever since Triple Deluxe was announced, Kirby at has been getting... At the same time. Sp- oh, for... Uh, at wait, the wait. same time, I wish the story was harder. At the same... There you go. Thank you. Uh, yeah. At the same time, I wish the story mode was harder or give us an option. For me, ever since Triple Deluxe was announced, Kirby has been getting stale. Planet Robobot proved that a shakeup in the system was needed. While I like Star Allies, I can't defend the lack of challenge in the main game. It was definitely needed. Truth accurate <laughs> and I, I think that that's a, a a big thing about it is like people see these videos that i do about kirby specifically mm-hmm. and they're like oh man like one peso specifically is like yo i can't wait to see the, the like people <laughs> the the butt hurt kirby fans in the comments <laughs> and stuff like that and it's like i mean i do the same thing with pokemon where it's like hey like i love this thing but like it needs to be made better Mm, and yeah. some people read that as like oh you're saying that like you don't like the the thing in the, its current state so therefore you don't like the thing and mm-hmm. it's like no i like the the core aspects of the thing but i think everything else surrounding that core is lackluster and it doesn't need to be yeah i think there's yeah there's something i mean just in that uh way of coming to different things like anytime i'm listening to music i'm being critical of it but not in a sense of like criticizing it or like being like downplaying it or whatever it's like i'm listening to it critically to like being able to kind of pull out the pieces and feel like oh this is the thing that i like about or the thing that i don't like or even in like my wife and i'll be listening to something in the car and there will be something where i'm like oh i don't really like how they do this one thing and i'll point that out when really i'm just saying like that or i'll even say like it's really interesting how they do blah 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 
because like I just think it's something that's interesting not necessarily something I like or even dislike but just like huh unusual that they do that I wonder why but right. then it comes across to her as like that I'm saying something bad like, about music she likes thing, like, you know yeah. like, and I'm like yeah. no I'm not and, but I also understand how it comes across that way because yeah. not like I guess you know that's just not everybody's preferred way to think about right. something and for me it is <laughs> yeah and I, I think that 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 divide just exists between right. people that make things and people that don't where it's mm. like if you make things you're always thinking of like how you can make things mm. better yeah whereas people that consume things are just consuming things you know prime example actually that's really easy is when i in college second year i moved into a house with a bunch of friends of mine and one of my roommates his dad had bought the house and so we were all living in this house so we got to paint the rooms whatever color we wanted so we all got to paint the house for like two weeks which was annoying because the walls were like a material that sucked but in any case (laughs) through that process i learned what a bad paint job was and like what it looked like or like the corners that looked good because we did them well and then from that point on for like months anytime i'd be in any room ever i'd be noticing the paint job in that room and seeing like the sides you know where it's the trim wasn't even or whatever and it was specifically just because in that short window of time i was a creator of paint in a room right and so then i was being critical of paint in a room everywhere else and then at some point that fell off and i don't pay attention to it anymore yeah but that at like, least if, let if me you realize a that certain job right like say you're like you're in the like food service business and you're a waiter and you're like man hmm. they're really good at this or they're really bad <laughs> at that or i yeah. need to tip them well because they did this that nobody else noticed but you did because you did that and you understand how hard or easy or you know whatever that was Mm -hmm. so like but most people just think like i ordered my food i got my food (laughs) are you saying you're a game dev is that what you're saying because you're not a game dev aj you're not allowed to say this stuff unless you've made 300 games yourself you know what you're right (laughs) that's true we're quitting the channel see you fanatics for it's been a fun ride goodbye (laughs) um but no like it's just like you understand the ins and outs of a thing when you even like look into it on this level right right where most people wouldn't connect the dots in the same way that we would where it's like the mario maker 2 right for everybody else on the planet that was the most surprising thing in the world (laughs) <laughs> but me and Bob were just sitting there like, they're going to do it. It's right. going to happen. They're uh-huh. going to make this thing. And it wasn't like just wishful thinking. It was just like, this happened and this happened and this exists and this is a dot and this is a dot and we're connecting mm-hmm. them. Yeah. Um. So it, it's just like thinking of things in different ways because of your life experiences, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's like Slumdog Millionaire. And on yes. that note, Kirby Kid says, I want a Kirby RPG <laughs> I wonder if everybody used the, the, like, has anybody ever used those two things in the same sentence? Kirby Absolutely Kid not. and Slumdog Millionaire. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, they have now, so. <laughs> Twice, even. Me and That's you. It's true. Look at that. Certain trends already. <laughs> Kirby Kid says, I want a Kirby RPG already. He's done racing, puzzle, battle royale, touchscreen platformers, and traditional platformers. And if they really want to change up Kirby, that could do it by introducing an RPG or a fully realized 3D Kirby, whichever works. I've seen that comment, the RPG one, and Mm -hmm. on this video specifically, uh, more than I ever would have thought of that, right? Like, because mm-hmm. I'd never think Kirby, that would make a great RPG, but I'm down, you know? Like, yeah. why not? I mean, especially like Mario and Luigi, that whole series, I think, sets a great precedent for Nintendo franchises that are more, I don't know, you, you know, cartoony or whatever, having their own RPG. And because, yeah, it would just be cool. Or, I don't know what exactly would be, but like even like being able to gain abilities throughout the whole game is something that Kirby already does, and that's something that RBGs are famous for is that you get more abilities as you keep going. So doing something along those lines where did you say RBGs? <laughs> I think so. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That's what she does really well is gain abilities. That just made me think of RGB. Which is a, the color another, spectrum yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah. Which is another thing that's like very creator specific. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think on it. I mean, I like RPGs in general, so I'd be down for 
pretty much any franchise like i'm excited about the steam world dig rpg um just to try it because it'll be cool you know sure why not that's it pretty much so there good you go. video me <laughs> <laughs> indeed nintendo just listen to some thoughts that are said like the yeah, ones I, I do see the videos because if i didn't say product provided by nintendo i would have got yelled at so you saw it oh you're so right you saw it what a good point i <laughs> should also tell them to hire you while you're at it <laughs> true it would be interesting i wonder how many of these kinds of ideas because it's not that they haven't had these ideas i just wonder how far any of these have gotten like you know i mean I can't think of a good if analogy. If they were like, you about. know what? AJ and Bob said they want Mario Maker 2. We had it on the docket, <laughs> but let's let's bring it forward two, two years. That's we're right. We're going to do end of life cycle. Now we're doing it in the middle. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I'd love to know what Nintendo's internal teams are doing or saying or whatever as far as, you know, who has, again, like a Kirby RPG. I'm sure somebody's had that idea, but like at what point has it gotten stopped? Because obviously if it's been an idea that was suggested anywhere, it got stopped somewhere. Right. And was that like to the first guy or like it got a little bit far and they brainstormed it a little bit or I don't know. It would just be cool. Who knows, man? Who knows? Yep. Um, Who knows too what games came out this last week or this next week? It, we, we do. Know. Yeah. Now everybody else does too. <laughs> uh, I felt okay. So it so actually I made video that Parker really interrupted um, <laughs> about the games that are coming to the Switch eShop. Um, wow. He, he just appeared in my video. Ugh. Um, what a rude person I must be. How rude. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun uh, intro thing. I, I expected more comments about that just but hey there was way less where's parker comments yeah so i mean where's aj's comments so they're they're, you know what it worked (laughs) it worked let's see Um, if they they appear next week yep and i so i think it was funny too it the title and thumbnail and stuff ended up being way more clickbaity than i was anticipating yo Uh, um but it worked though it It worked And it wasn't, and people didn't seem to be mad about it. Yeah, so that's it funny. didn't like it didn't like destroy the video in the, in right. the other direction. You know, so like there, what there I was, clearly some people are like, I'm not happy about this. Like, I don't <laughs> think anybody really said that in the comments. Nobody commented like clickbait. No, yeah, I think the only thing I noticed was, and I hadn't even thought of this was because when I first suggested the title, I was like, because for anybody who doesn't know, so AJ makes the thumbnails because that's not a forte of mine, at least not yet. Um, and I was like, I don't know, put like the two guys from Unravel, or from Unravel Two in there because that's what we're talking about or whatever. And you know, that's the one that it's like this game's finally coming. Yeah. Um, and I was like, nah. Yeah. And so <laughs> I'm just going to like not tell them. And what's funny is like even in my description thing, yeah, I was like a red and blue blah 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 and a platformer and blah 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 things. And then somebody commented Cuphead, and I was like. <laughs> yeah, that it actually fits. Like it meets all those criteria, so it made it seem like it was something that it wasn't quite. But again, people seemed fine with it. So if you uh, if you're here from that video, then that's why that's what happened. I don't know. Yep. It was funny, but it worked but, out. So hey, it worked, and it's like everybody else does it. You know? Yeah. Like, I felt like we utilize clickbait the least of most channels like there's some tactics like the like all caps and stuff like that that's like the more enticing part of it but we don't like try to like misdirect people in any right. any way yeah. um and, and even in the content like i wouldn't even say that title was misleading right no it's yeah it's true because um, yeah and it wasn't like something where i guess the most misleading it could have been is that somebody thought we were saying like that some game was announced or like that we're spilling some scoop or something like that right, which but like even even in that regard that then falls on them yeah right you exactly. know like a lot of times like people will comment on something and like it'll like they'll come to the conclusion where i'll reply and it's like how 
Like, how is it clickbait? <laughs> and it's yeah. like, well, th- that made me think that this. And it's like, but where is that in the title? Like, it <laughs> even says in the description blatantly what the video is. Like, mm-hmm. um, somebody commented, I, I don't remember what video. It was like two, three weeks ago. And they were like, this will never happen or whatever. Like, you're just setting people's hopes up. And I'm like, oh, it's a Pokemon <laughs> one. It was a Pokemon one. And okay. I was like, but how, though? Like, how is this any different from you sitting around with your friend and being like, hey, you know, it would be cool with this. Yeah. Um, and he's like, well, uh, this just seems like a more official context, so you shouldn't really be doing that. It's like, but why? <laughs> it's not the, the official context. It's just, I mean, it literally, like, that's honestly the benefit of having a YouTube community for this kind of thing is that, like, I, I do have luckily one friend in, you know, IRL that I can talk about this stuff with. And we can have those kind of conversations about, like, yeah, it would be awesome if it did this and no, if it did that, it would be cool. But not everybody necessarily does. And even if so, like, maybe you want to have more than that one conversation a week about that kind of thing. So you get right. to enjoy you know somebody else or just somebody on like a that that's even deeper in the weeds than maybe even you yeah. <laughs> to be like you know they'd be like i had no clue how laboratory worked in that way you know uh-huh. like that, that sort of situation yeah um that's what it's for it's not me saying like i'm not trying to say i'm a fortune teller or tell you that i got the inside scoop mm-hmm. you know some things i know that you, you may not know that i might not be able to tell you but I probably wouldn't make a video on it because I probably <laughs> wouldn't be allowed to. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was uh, all that stuff. Uh, a couple comments. I just pulled two comments from the video. Um, so one of them is John Matos, Matos something. Hey, John, what's up? Who says, where the hell is Terraria on Switch? Oh, um, snap, we got PG. Real quick. Yeah, look at that. Moving <laughs> up in the world. Um, and, yeah, so that's a good question. I... <laughs> I was just curious. I mean, that's not even, it's not like it really has anything to do with that specific <laughs> video besides it being, you know, games. But that's a good question. Like, it seems like one of those games that was Did ported they to everywhere. I feel, like they, I feel like they said that they were going to do that and then it just never happened. I feel like I remember that as well. So, like, is that the kind of thing? I, I don't know what other games, because that, that game did pretty well, right? Yeah. That's so, why it's on everything. Right, exactly. So it seems like either it's one of three things. Either they're still working on it and not saying anything about it because they're going to announce it at some point soon that it's coming or whatever. Or they're working on a sequel and so don't want to bother with the original. Or they're not doing it for some reason. They just, and that's it. <laughs> they just hate us all. Yeah. So, yeah, that's. I just thought that was an interesting question because it's like that's... I don't know where that game is because it seems like at this point all pretty much all of the older classic bigger indie games have made their way over there's a couple that haven't but for the it most looks part like it's on there oh wait no release date 2019 oh okay so it is announced at least um interesting Age It'll rating to be determined triple <laughs> <laughs> x <laughs> which also for the record i thought that movie the triple x movie or whatever those movies were um actually rated triple x so it was like when an eighth grader friend of mine told me he watched it i was like what when i was in eighth <laughs> grade obviously um so yeah that's a fun time and the second comment i pulled is from sam diaz it says the first game i remember getting super into well because okay so i asked what games uh what game got people into video games yeah first i'm surprised game, you didn't pull more from that I could I comment I replied to a bunch of them in there so I feel like you should still pull I feel like that is good incentive it's like coming up yeah. with something like it's a good incentive to comment to to be like to, I mean just in general yeah. I feel like we don't advertise that enough to be like you're gonna be a part of our content if you mm-hmm. comment you know like that <laughs> that's the easy way that you can get involved in this is just yeah. comment. I'll I'll make a bigger point about it next week too of just yeah. like if you talk about the things or if you leave some comments, we'll talk about them. Um, but uh, yeah, in any case, the other one that I did pull was uh, Sam Diaz saying the first game I remember getting super into is Pokemon Pearl, but Breath of the Wild is what reinvigorated my love for video games. The first game I remember playing is some Spider-Man game on my cousin's GameCube. That's an eclectic. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think I really appreciated it just because it's like, the Pokemon and Breath of the Wild part is pretty much exactly my flow where Pokemon was the first video game I ever played, except it was blue. And Breath of the Wild oh, is really the game that pulled me back into same. gaming recently. Um, 
I don't feel, I feel like I never really completely fell out of gaming. I mm-hmm. fell out of console gaming around like the 360 era. Mm-hmm. I played Smash Brothers still. <laughs> Smash yeah. Brawl. I was still playing that. Um, but I never like was like up on like, oh, the new release comes out at this time. Blah, blah, blah. You know, like that type of crap. Just mm-hmm. just DS games and stuff like that during that time. Um, but for the first game is probably Pokemon. Pokemon Yellow. That there was like, go. yeah, this is the thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to play video <laughs> games. That's going to happen. Yep. I don't know if it was like, yep, this is going to be my job, you know, but <laughs> it was like, yeah, I'm going to play video games, doing this more. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just like, I I mean, yeah, I remember getting, um, getting Pokemon Blue, and then at some point, I don't, I think actually Pokemon Snap might have been my first. Gross. No, it was Mario 64, um, but I, so I borrowed an N64 from some friends of ours at church, and... I think they had two, and at some point, I then was given one, maybe as a present or something, but at some point, I had two N64s for no good reason, and I don't know. Yeah, that's weird, but in any case, yeah, I I think Super Mario 64 was the first game, and I must have borrowed it from him and then gotten my own copy or something like that, and then uh, stuff. Honestly, one thing that really hurt gaming for me was, so I mentioned at some point in the past that I had two years that I was just not able to play video games for location purposes or whatever but yeah. um then uh when i got back to where my consoles were i had given them to a friend of mine to like hold on to like my consoles and all my games been like hey here's these i'll be back um then give me give me my give games back <laughs> and i came back and he's like oh man yeah i sold most of those Oof. i was like you've got to be kidding me and so it was he sold my um I think because I had uh, an, I had an N64 and a bunch of games with that. He didn't sell much of the N64 stuff, so that was good. Well, he he did sell Ocarina of Time and yeah, some other stuff like that. But he also sold my PlayStation and like all my PlayStation games. Did which, you did you have sold them? I should have. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, that was that really sucked. Like honestly, I'd probably be maybe more of a of a sony gamer as well if it weren't for the fact that then i just you know that's when you just gave up you're like oh he gave away all my games like pretty much yeah it was just like at that point i was like well i've only got nintendo games and i really wanted a gamecube and then i the little bit of gaming time that i put in throughout high school was gamecube stuff for sure so yeah that's just how i don't even know like the first game that i ever played though like i don't know Mm. that because i have older siblings so right, it's like, like yeah. apparently my older sister who's my oldest sibling mm-hmm. um she's like yeah we used to play toe jam and earl all the time on sega genesis <laughs> and it's like really I if you say so <laughs> i don't remember playing that but all right and, you know yeah. like, i never remember playing a toe jam and earl game in my life mm-hmm. including the new one um yeah. So I was like, okay, and then like, the, like my mom used to talk about. I think it was Pocahontas. Like we had like all the Disney, like Capcom, like all mm-hmm. those, like Aladdin and all that stuff. I remember playing Lion King because mm-hmm. like that's something that was like apparently everybody's like it's the most hard game in the world, and it's like the first game I beat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like it's not, no, it's not that hard. It's kind of janky, but you were right. That's honestly that's the thing with all those old games is like we've mentioned before the arcade setup but also just janky physics where it's like yeah, yeah it's hard because there's this one spot in um uh what's the in ghouls and ghosts or ghosts and goblins yeah. there's one spot where if you just walk in this one spot you just insta die for yeah. no reason it's just like a death spot <laughs> <laughs> so death like spot. all right there you go whatever if you were playing without save states that's it like don't touch that spot i guess <sighs> yeah so don't stuff. touch that spot the cool spot to confirm <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, that's it on my video. But I'll pull more comments next week to talk about things. Um, I'm trying to think of also, you know, like what are good questions to ask people? Because I know people like to comment on things, but if there's nothing to comment on, then you know, which most yeah, of my you gotta, videos, you just gotta have a conversation starter of some sort. Yep. You're just, just less themed generally, right, exactly. So it's harder which to have a fine. conversation on the video. So it's just gotta be a separate thing, which yeah. I think should be fun it's still like gonna be gaming related or nintendo related um, Mm -hmm. in some form so it's fine to do stuff like that indeed 
So yeah, that's it for uh, for those videos. And now we're on to Q and A. Uh, AJ, do you want to tell them how they can ask us some questions in the future? You could go to the post that me or Parker apparently Parker's just slowly <laughs> like systemically replacing me. Yep, usurping um, all your stuff. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> somebody's going to post and say, "Hey, ask us questions," um, and then you could you could tweet or post in the Discord, which you can join by clicking the link in the description, um, or on the YouTube community post. Which, if you're subscribed, you'll mm -hmm. see. Or you should see if YouTube is working correctly. Right. Because <laughs> it off does not do that. It's interesting with the community post thing. Like most of the way that I watch YouTube is I'll just go on browser to my subscriptions box and just watch mm -hmm. stuff from there, which YouTube community stuff does not show up in there at all because that's just not how it's meant to. It's supposed to, but there is an option that I think you can check off where it's like, don't put them mm -hmm. here. You gotcha. Know? Then I might have that turned on. Yeah. But I don't know. But yeah, if I go to home, then I'll typically see them. Um, but I think the easiest way, most people probably watch stuff on their phone anyway, and that's for sure, that's the biggest I place where it's most obvious. Too. Yeah, they definitely show up on your yeah. phone because that's where I've noticed them before. Yeah. So Cool. But yeah, so let's go into some of these questions. So Gil Gilberto Caldera, uh, we've kind of already answered this question, but here we go. The Google console, what do you think about this? I think that it's the, the first step to Skynet. <laughs> Rip Pretty us. Much. Yeah, we, I mean, we've already talked about it earlier, but I, my, I think if they're being smart, they'll invest a lot into it and actually go in as like, get exclusives and do it like the way that you know sony and microsoft came in into their consoles at the time and have like a full-on hardware thing even though the streaming thing is going to be existing as well um as a kind of separate alternative i think you know it'd be a power move if they bought ea and they're like hey we're yeah. gonna make them not suck anymore yeah. and everybody would be like okay cool we're we'll going <laughs> google this generation yep i was well actually because when i was telling my coworker about you know which um whether to get a ps4 or xbox or whatever like i was mentioning before i definitely suggested the ps4 but i was also like i think part of why it would be good to get a ps4 now is because i suspect xbox is actually going to be substantially better next generation i mean there's going to be with some caveats to that for sure but for a couple of reasons including ip and all that but also that nintendo or that um sony's president dude or ceo i, I forgot his name um no, well, no, the, they're American spokesperson either. guy. They're equivalent of Reggie. Yeah. Sean Layden. That's well, not guy. anymore, Rick. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, until, until April. Until um, April. Um, so Sean yeah. Layden, I think it was. I think Sean Layden left. But, well, he's still there right now, I think. But some uh, some other some dude. Some guy. Is, yeah, some dude. <laughs> yeah, some <laughs> said guy. Said something some. to the effect of pretty much like, yeah, we really want to do this thing, which is to spend more time on our first party games and put fewer of them out that are of higher quality which is like all right like so that's, what we're going to give one game every eight years now i mean Cause, cause, i mean with the, basically what they do is they're like we're not going to release anything for half a decade and then there's going to be <laughs> one to two years where we're releasing everything and then people were like playstation is the best one because they have horizon zero dawn and god of war and you know Bloodborne and all this stuff. yeah all, all within like all re release within like a one to two year window mm -hmm. um but then there's nothing else for like the next three four years after that yep they're really bad at pacing and they're, yeah. they're basically saying that they're going to get worse at pacing that's, that's what i'm afraid stupid. of yeah exactly i mean if they were saying it in the sense that if they were saying both like we're gonna have fewer games but they're gonna be better paced like sure i guess that's that's fine but and even if they're great games i mean i guess they're system sellers for a reason that's a thing but you know if there's it's one system like, seller every four years on the ps5 versus you know 10 of a slightly lower caliber even on xbox that would be the better console <laughs> i feel like it's completely reasonable for them for for an expectation to exist for mm -hmm. all of the big three to have at least two big games per year yeah absolutely at least two that ideally so, should be a, a roughly six months apart like yeah. 2017 for nintendo was perfect having right. breath of the wild and then mario odyssey about you know six months apart 
2018 having Pokemon and Smash, Smash both right like, at the end yeah. was like, all right, come on, maybe that's maybe not the best way to do it. And I mean, it worked for them in terms of sales, but yeah. it, it made a but lot not of as people far as view the year yes. differently. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that would have been that would have been a stronger feeling year is if they had done if they paced it out like that and honestly we might be getting some of the same in 2019 where like there's kind of weird i mean we got a mario the right pacing the is probably going to be like it's going to feel like a, a sony uh situation but yeah. condensed within a year so right. it's going to be like we're going to go six months with nothing mm-hmm. and then the last six months it's going to be mario maker animal crossing you know luigi's yeah. mansion pokemon like all this stuff in that last six months is going to be ridiculous yep it is nice though on that front that um do 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 like when the switch was announced they kind of talked about merging their you know home console and hybrid or and the handheld production in, in any case so that they you know they're not split across two different kinds of platforms with that now they just have one and so all their teams can be working on you can have double the amount of games or even at least one and a half times the amount of games on one console instead of split across two and so far it seems like especially this year that's really proving to be the case like yep yeah 30, they're rip, really rip 3DS. yeah absolutely <laughs> 3ds is getting like four notable games this year i i suspect also so in um or has gotten i don't even know if it's getting any more after i i don't think so no i think it's gotten Maybe. its last one that's like officially announced kirby's always the last game yeah <laughs> um I feel like at their quarterly report, which will be their end of year report, so that'll be April 30th, I I suspect they're going to actually announce, like, all right, 3DS is, is out of production. 3DS is dead. We yeah. threw it in the garbage. <laughs> I Yeah, I really feel like that's probably when they're going to announce it, just because, I don't know, you know, it makes sense around that time. So. And it's pretty obvious by now, but... So, yeah, we got a little off topic, but uh, good question, Gilberto. Hey, man, this is the the, the Tangent Podcast. Welcome it's, to Directly You, the that's what's Tangent up. Podcast about Nintendo and also podcasts. I mean, when you have as much time as you want to talk about things, you kind of can. So sure. it's great. As opposed to like, sure. you know, I listen to NVC and stuff, and they just recently went to audio only format, but they were video and they only had an hour to talk about stuff. So they could only have a certain amount of tangents. But we can kind of go just until we get yeah, hungry. I mean, the, the, and the, only, my life. the only uh, like gatekeeper here is me. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm like, nope, we're not doing two two hours, then like not two hours, but I'm yeah. fine with it. Yep. And as long as the audience is fine with it, mm-hmm. cool. Whatever. Actually, on that note, let us know in the comments because I'm curious uh, if you want it to be seven hours. The end. Uh, Let's know. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to no, paste together all of the other week's ones. It's way too long. No. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to put a poll. Do you prefer uh, longer podcasts or shorter podcasts? Somebody remind me to do it if it's not there. Nice. Grimhane, if I didn't put the poll, remind me. <laughs> I am curious. Yeah, because it's one of those things. It's it's hard to get direct feedback on that because like, like three or four people will say we want a longer podcast, but then the 12 people that liked it at the length that it was who didn't chime in about it would then be disappointed. You know, like that's always I mean, tricky. To-, to be fair, at least I don't know the metrics for the rest of them because I don't think there's any way that I, I could even mm-hmm. uh get that information unless from google google probably has it yeah <laughs> um the only place that i can tell how much of the podcast people listen to is on youtube and youtube's right. not even like where the bulk of the people listen to the podcast right yeah um so there's no real way of knowing if people li- and i would assume that youtube probably has the worst i would definitely think so yeah uh retention out of all of them and youtube's retention is pretty good nice before actually before we finish up well we've got a a good amount of questions left but uh one thing i was thinking earlier today as i was listening to other podcasts we haven't done a call for like rate and review and subscribe on well subscribe yes but rate and review on like apple Podcasts and stuff like that um in a while so that said if you're listening on apple podcasts you should leave uh you know ideally five star review because that's what if you're listening this far in you obviously like it (laughs) i guess but you should leave a review and stuff and uh we can go back through i guess and read those as well but uh it just helps out a lot so that more people can get in involved in the community from the podcast side and and all those things be even longer if you like longer podcasts (laughs) you gotta help more people join in that's right because then we have more stuff to talk about yep 
Um, yeah, going back to comments or questions rather. Uh, I'm gonna skip over this one and come back to it a little bit later. Yeah, but okay. um, Eric Henley asks, "Do you think we will ever see a Fallout game, whether old or new, on the Switch?" Yes. Yes, I agree. What are your reasons? I have my own. Because Bethesda loves the Switch. Well, there you go. That's a good reason. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I mean, that and that I think um, the only reason we haven't yet probably is just because they were really trying to push Fallout 76 and we all know how that went. Yeah, rip. <laughs> rip. So, you know, I think it in the same way that we didn't get Mario Maker 2 because Nintendo decided they wanted to port over New Super Mario Bros. Deluxe U. So yeah. then by the time that came out, they're like, all right, here we go. You know, so I think fairly soon whenever you know fallout 76 is really just just done which it pretty much i think it, it already is um they'll probably announce i bet this year they'll announce that there's a an, at least an old fallout game coming to the switch would be my yep. guess and that is that good question eric always good questions uh crazy derp 2 asks the chances of a reveal at e3 of arms 2 the new updates over time made the game a lot better, and all they have to do is add the ability to play with online friends. You can do that. You can huh. play online with friends. I've played on long, uh, online with friends. I played with Logan online. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I think you had to do like the party mode or something like that. Mm. Yeah, I do remember from the just the beta that I played it the online stuff was a bit weird, wasn't it? Where it was like you it would if you were playing against somebody else, it would put you in like a maybe you'd play together with some against somebody else or against each other. I don't know. Was that still a thing by the time the game came out and had updates and all that? Maybe not. What? <laughs> I don't I'm know. Sorry. It was like a weird <laughs> it was a weird setup kind of thing in my memory where like you know, if you and a friend played together, you'd be like little, you know, spheres hanging around and then get yeah. matched up with other spheres. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. That's how it is. It's it's like that. So, yeah, it's maybe like it would a, be good to have party more. Mode. It's kind of like the arenas in Smash Brothers. Okay. Yeah. But it, you can have simultaneous fights going on. It's not right. just like it, these two people are fighting and that's it. Yep. Yeah. It would be cool, I think, just in general, just to give more options. I mean, maybe that's more streamlined, and yeah. that way mm-hmm. you can get more, for sure, get people in. But even having a side thing where you could do more like the arena so that you can specifically pick, I want to do just this, I get, you know, that would be cool. Uh, to the original question, though, AJ, do you think any chances of seeing a uh, reveal at E3 of Arms 2? Nah. Yeah. Not, I mean, maybe eventually, but I think it's too soon that's, for them to do something like that. My thoughts exactly. Yeah, I think um, I think at this point, especially this early in the Switch life cycle, it still feels like the Switch is pretty new, which means it still feels like ARMS is pretty new, which granted it is. It's not even two years old yet. Um, the, the ARMS that is, the Switch barely is. Yeah. But I feel like you need to have enough time to feel like, oh man, it would be really cool. I mean, like Splatoon was a great amount of time between Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2. That was what, three, three ish years? Yeah, a little over three years, maybe. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was like two, three years, something like that. So I feel like somewhere in the, like next year, I could maybe see that happening. But I think, but even then, it just doesn't. The difference between Splatoon, that Mm -hmm. gap, and the gap between arms is like, one, that's a console generation difference. Right. Absolutely. It's like, okay, we moved to the next console. Two, ARMS did pretty good. Like, it sold two point something million units, was, which is ridiculous <laughs> for a fighting game. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Of course, like, uh, the Nintendo fans are used to Smash Brothers, and that sold freaking, like, 12 million. Right. So, it's like, that's not that much. But, like, the next best-selling fighting game that year was probably, like, under a million. <laughs> like, right. fighting games do not sell very well on the whole. Like, top 10 fighting game sales is like the bottom part of that is like less than 5 million fighting yeah. games are not uh mario kart <laughs> i think the tricky thing is like people were really looking for stuff to play at the beginning of the switch life cycle including during that season so a lot of people bought it I, I, and nintendo obviously announced the sales metrics but i suspect the sales metrics and the actual like um recurrent player user base type metrics are vastly different so probably i think yeah. nintendo is aware that like it you know it did all right but it didn't do like gangbusters like I feel like it's definitely inflated but yes. it's it's still not something to scoff at no even for them. no definitely not just yeah. because like by that logic 
every game that came out on Switch should have sold at least two million. You know, right, and if it was yeah. just that that helped arms to succeed there were a lot of games released on switch in the first year so Mm -hmm. why wasn't why didn't those games all get to plus million you know right which i mean that's a no yeah exactly so i think i i think arms 2 is coming probably but um some point in life but probably yeah further down the road for sure than than this e3 i think I would be baffled if if they announced it at this E3. I think to me there's a zero percent chance of it happening, but uh, yeah, but probably it happening at some point. So, uh, Squansel asks question for AJ: Do you think being a content creator and having to keep up with numerous releases on a regular basis has turned you more impatient as a consumer? Now that you have to stay on top of new games and often don't have to worry about paying for them, are you less likely to continue in a game that you didn't that didn't hook you from the start? No, um, I feel like honestly, I feel like it made me more patient because, <laughs> like, especially in the beginning, like when I first started getting games for free, it made me try to be more understanding about certain things because i didn't want to just like crap on these people that just gave me this game for free you know yeah like i'm i'm usually more hesitant to be like well you know like this is like that's why i didn't talk about yeast for example like i didn't (laughs) want to be like this game sucks because they said it to me two months before it was done so Mm -hmm. it was like it wasn't finished you know stuff like that um but even like when i bought everything that i played i still was very much like um okay i bought this thing i played it for a couple hours didn't really like it that much on to the next thing just because like i view it in the way that i view most other things in entertainment right where it's like okay i paid what twenty dollars to go see a movie Mm -hmm. um and that was two hours of my life yeah so sixty dollars for five hours that's a bargain my dude <laughs> you know um so it's like i i just don't i'm not as you don't precious feel like you have to squeeze with, every ounce out right, of it for right. it to be worth I'm more, it i'm more precious with my time than i am with my money yeah um that makes sense. so so like in in that regard it's like aj uh if, give me a bunch of money uh sure um <laughs> as long as it doesn't take long <laughs> Uh, Got it. Cool. But yeah, Good like plan. If, if it's like something that I'm not liking, I just don't see the point. And like, like I kickstarted ukulele, right? Yeah. So I got that game, and they sent it to me, and I didn't like it. So I was like, okay, well, I'm done with this, and that's fine. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. I. I don't know. I don't know what to tell. <laughs> like, I, I think that it is like easy to like try like to make that connection where it's like oh yeah these people are jaded because they get games for free and maybe some people are Mm -hmm. um but i i feel like for me that adds like an accountability to it because i like i can't just like i have to do my due diligence i can't just like pull a logan like like he'll do sometimes where it's like i have a cursory understanding of this series so i'm going to tear it apart based only on that (laughs) and then like go off on that and make a video about that i need to at least understand why i don't like something if i don't like it right um and then if i'm especially if i want to make content about it yep no that totally makes sense and there are i feel like i've listened to some content creators that does sound like they're a little bit jaded in that respect where it's you know like they know that they i don't know th- that kind of thing like pretty much squanel what you're asking i feel right. like i've heard other people like that but for the most part it seems like that's not the case for most people and that it a lot I, of times it's like, more like i what? mean not to not maybe maybe to disparage <laughs> those content creators a little bit yeah. um i feel like it shouldn't be like that like i feel like like uh there was i don't i'm not gonna say names i was going to say names but i'm not going to say <laughs> names but there was this creator mm-hmm. that made this video that was basically saying like i feel ripped off by this or, or like this mm, game was right. like i'm blindsided by what this game is or whatever um and i feel like you're not doing your job right if you feel ripped off right you know? yeah like for instance like i was when kirby star allies came out Mm -hmm. (laughs) before the game came out i was like this game looks like it's going to be x y and z Mm -hmm. right then the game came out and it was x y and z i didn't say i felt ripped off by kirby because i knew what it was Mm -hmm. right 
Um, so you should, and for more context, somebody, somebody like Grimham. Grimham might know who I'm talking about, <laughs> um, but I almost said his name. Uh, <laughs> but it was about the Super Mario, I mean, uh, new Super Mario Bros. Not being worth sixty dollars or whatever. Yeah, not being worth sixty dollars or this is yeah. this game is a remake. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. like who they, like th- that was like the gotcha for them. It's mm. like what I didn't know this was a remake, and it's like how, <laughs> what. <laughs> How do you not know that as a content creator you're I think supposed to go in knowing that stuff. right i think it's better like same kind of outlook but with a better perspective is like something to the effect of like instead of why i feel ripped off by new super mario bros u deluxe is saying like why new super mario bros u deluxe may not be worth your 60 dollars or something like right. that which like still you know that's kind of a hot take in some regards but at least you can give reasons behind it and it's not like a knee-jerk reaction and, it's just a, and the thing about it though is if that is the takeaway and that's the headline that needs to be a video that comes out before the game's out right yeah yeah because like it's not like again it's not a gotcha moment they're not like the game's out and you bought it (laughs) that's a remake gotcha yeah Ah, you know like (laughs) that was very clear from the get-go what was in this game what was new etc etc um so it's just like like on that level i feel like um i am less likely to feel ripped off because i go into my purchases or what games i accept or redeem or do whatever with i go into them knowing what they are like if i if it was going to be something i was more flippant with where it's like i'm not i'm not going to actually play this but i'll redeem it i'm not going to play it i'm just going to put it in the discord you know yeah absolutely so yeah I, that's interesting i i have not gotten many games for free so i wouldn't know but not yet not, not yet. yet parker will let you know <laughs> what next month by next month parker will have all <laughs> types of probably more than me you'll probably have more free games than i've ever gotten <laughs> because you need to be less discerning about that sort of thing with uh, your show <laughs> yeah i guess so <laughs> um this this question is really important uh Bacot says hi hello discord hashtag questions and answers you got your answer <laughs> good good question <laughs> all right uh Lizdrin, will i listen to the podcast while i'm drunk or while i'm hungover happy saint patrick's day everyone um both accurate bebop in response to that one says oh dang saint patrick's day already Let's look at that wow cool and then he says parker this question is for you um I don't want to read this. Uh, Why are you so awesome? And when can we expect you to make more content aside from the weekly game updates? Um, I respectfully feel free to disagree with the first part of that, but thank you very much for saying Ah, it, Bebop. There's a lot. As soon as 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 we go, Parker's going to be like, I'm the best person. This is why I steal all your intros and I interrupt your videos and I take your posts. (laughs) <laughs> it's not the best that's i mean and sounds I'm just like, like and, me wow. and i'm gonna i'm gonna be like okay yeah i know i know i know Parker. and i destroy everybody at smash bros exactly because i am so good at all the things clearly um as far as the other part of that question i don't know right now we're mostly just focusing on doing we're just trying to make this show stuff that people want to watch consistently yeah honestly so it, that's well, his current show right yeah and exactly also this but i mean i think what may what may be the closest case to that would be that maybe theoretically if you know one week logan can't do a video or something like that he knows he's going to be out of town then maybe if i know in far enough advance i could try to make something similar for that but that's complete speculation and way down the road because honestly i mean so at this point i've got a full-time job and a wife and stuff so the two nights a week that i'm able to give to fanatics for is very a lot of fun but uh, probably about my max for at least this stage of life so what you guys need to do is like comment subscribe (laughs) um tell your friends to also like comment subscribe uh anchor listener support program channel memberships uh all that all that good and dear stuff so we can hire parker full-time and he doesn't have that job anymore and then you'll just look at my face all the time i'll just be showing you my face 24 7 (laughs) exactly uh which you probably you probably wouldn't want so maybe never mind i won't show you my face all right uh, Batar 35 Batar asks what is your favorite video game to play drunk another saint patrick's day question i assume um i don't often do that uh i don't drink just because it's, uh, it's gross yeah. honestly <laughs> That's uh, just enough, yeah. I, again like i'm just like that in all things in life where mm-hmm. it's like i don't like it 
<laughs> so I'm not going to engage, you know, right. like um, I've played literally one game while intoxicated and that was Madden. <laughs> and that was a big reason why I was playing that in the first place. Cause I'm like, you know what, F it, dude. Yeah. I'll play Madden, yeah. <laughs> and I'm over here running off sides and whatnot. <laughs> um, so I Sports. guess Madden just by default. Yeah, I I also don't I don't drink much at all, and I even when I do, I don't get drunk. But um, the only times I do drink, mostly I'm kind of a cheapskate so i just don't buy alcohol to have around the house or anything like that but if i we have friends that if we'll hang out with them we'll just have a couple drinks or something typically sometimes when we're hanging out and then if we do we'll actually it's not a like console video game at all we play um it's an app that's pretty much it's pretty much cards against humanity but just an app right. version so it just has a lot more cards and they, they get updated and stuff it's called evil apples and oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, so we just play that and that's pretty fun and i'm if if anyone's intoxicated it's i'm the least of it by not even like i don't know so all that to say yeah I just gross, don't really dude. <laughs> also like you know what um being in control is pretty cool agreed <laughs> yeah no that's and that's the thing like i've never i've never honestly been more than kind of buzzed um just because i yeah i cherish that i think to some degree of just like feeling like feeling in control and feeling like i'm all here and stuff and so i don't have any reason it's like because I, I this is a whole separate topic but to me like getting drunk to some degree feels like escapism a little bit yeah. and right. that's just even in like video games and movies and stuff like that i really enjoy playing them but i am just not a fan of escapism in general regardless of the what the thing is that you're escaping into yeah like i don't i don't really seek that out either yeah. where it's like i mean to some degree like I, I feel like it is escapism in a passive way for mm -hmm. me where it's like i mean that's just what it is um but it's not like i go to it for that reason like i don't mm -hmm. play pokemon and be like man if only i was <laughs> in pokemon right you know yeah um but like it just ends up being that just by virtue of the fact of what it is but uh this probably got a deeper answer than you want it <laughs> there you so, go probably there did <laughs> oh man um last but not least bf 2001 times four um uh, it's falcon that's falcon, falcon. oh pff, i didn't know that look at that what's up falcon um says what are your 2019 goals for finesse this is the one that i pushed to the end because i feel like oh that's a good one to yeah, end it's on. a good, it's a good end um point. i'll we'll get to that question to say and then also well no it says yeah here i'll just ask the whole question uh what are your 2019 goals for fanatics for you have done a fantastic job growing the channel providing more and more great content as well as interacting with the ever-growing fanatics for community where do we grow from here and then also p.s logan needs to find me an ultimate hashtag f0 on f0 nx hashtag f0 2k19 hashtag team logan hashtag team jess um <laughs> thanks falcon as far as the logan needs to fight you in ultimate thing uh you gotta you gotta pencil in an appointment that's what i had to do that's right uh so that's what you gotta do you gotta fill out a form <laughs> wait two to three uh business weeks <laughs> and you might get a response on when you'll get the next response mm -hmm. um as far as like uh 2019 goals the, i mean the main thing is just to like figure out what the heck is going on algorithmically for us mm -hmm. um because it kind of feels like it was like a hard switch on youtube's end that's like nah we don't want to recommend stuff anymore yeah even though videos are performing better in terms of like all the metrics of like relative comments and likes to dislikes mm -hmm. and viewer retention and all that good stuff um so really just figuring that out uh ironing out parker show to like have a formula that people latch on to mm -hmm. um beyond that figure out like whether or not streaming makes sense for us on a regular basis um and some new shows possibly nice yeah and i'm just along here for the ride <laughs> <laughs> like i said i'm doing i yeah i'll be doing what i'm doing and enjoying all this stuff and enjoying you wonderful people yep that's Cue what it is outro uh thank you everybody for listening <laughs> to the show um i don't remember how to do this anymore because parker <laughs> parker stole my abilities yep 
um everybody you know like comment subscribe share with a friend if you want to see the channel grow like falcon that's right that's how you do it you know you tweet at a friend you see our videos if you're one of the people that comment on a video you're always like man i like this video you're like always there you're like hashtag first and all that stuff and whatnot share it man you got a twitter it doesn't matter how many followers you got tweet it out dude you mm -hmm. got a facebook post it do all that good stuff True. Uh, thanks thanks again parker final thoughts final thoughts um everybody uh, make sure to drink more Ovaltine. Uh, okay. I, I drink zero. So <laughs> That's a Christmas story reference for anybody who knows a Christmas story. Actually, it's a Christmas story. But, uh, hey, good job. See you guys later. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>